So what? Try to vote for a mayor or who? someone who will get rid of the tolls. Like we can get rid of the tolls. Yeah. You just get, you just get rid of them. People should be allowed to come to Doesn't New even. York or leave New so York without having to pay do we have a bribe. In New York City. <laughs> How many people do we have in New York City that you like nine seems, million? Like this is like a like a simple thing to do. Like, like so, so nine, nine million people. people. Hold on, hold on. So, on. Nine, so million nine million people. people. Hold on, nine nine. I'm getting an I'm echo. Getting an echo. Street, you're Street, echoing. You're echoing. So nine million people want to pay tolls. Is that what I'm hearing here? I'm not saying that. So then why why are there tolls? If it's that simple, like you're saying, why aren't 9 million people doing anything about it? You tell me, guys. Because, because, guys there's, so smart. because there's 9 guys million so smart. followers. So tell me why 9 people can't get it done, but you're asking one guy to do it. Tell me. Tell me. Because well, there's 9 I'm not, million you followers, ask me what you can and do. there's not one leader yeah, I didn't tell you you're going to gonna get it done. Well, he said, what am I doing? So you, I'm, I'm, my response gotcha. is gotcha. 9 million people haven't gotten it done, but you want me to do it. I'm just saying there's Someone 9 million followers it. and not a single leader out of the package. If, I if want the New York City it. to go to be uh, conservative. You think that's ever going to happen? No, not really. I don't know. I think you're just yeah, probably you're not to make that they, they all have a bunch of bad assumptions about conservatives. They assume they hate poor people, hate black people, you know, on down the line. Hate hate everybody that you know no one actually hates. Or very few people actually hate. I'll be honest with you. Um, I'll be honest with you. I don't feel a lot of hate in this room, but I don't feel a lot of empathy either. I don't feel hate. Well, we're talking but about I, policy. I know, know where I'm they sure got I that am. idea from, but I don't feel hate towards mo from most conservatives, and I'm a progressive. So what? What idea? What idea? What? What idea? What is that? What are we talking about? What idea? What? Where the idea came from that conservatives hate everybody? Yeah. From a lot I of leaders of the party that kind of led that projection both leaders from both parties let's put it that way we've uh, got we've so got a I, lot of leaders in the parties that that uh project a um a uh form of visceralness <laughs> towards each other um i i'm not going to blame it on any specific person in either party but i think that both parties tend to blame the other side and and cause a rift that makes either side believe that the other side hates them and um like See you later. like for example a, a hard work ethic is different than not caring about homelessness so i mean but but you can easily conflate those two right depending on how you word things and how you speak to people you can make it sound like you don't give a shit about homeless people by simply saying that you feel that a strong work ethic in your country is a good thing right those are two the right. thing of it is is that you're talking about people that have mental health issues and also most likely have drug addictions so this is what we're talking about. Why would you say that? Why would you, why would you add the you drug got, addiction thing? You have because that's what because majority true, of Mike. them have. They have drug addiction. You have I'm lumberjack in the queue? Okay, Mike, Mike, I want to talk to you real quick. Do you I have, have a buddy named Kevin. Is what? lumberjack in the queue? Why did he, why did he get kicked out? I didn't kick anybody out. He left. He was just door. getting ready to say something. I it, I felt like it was going to be. I felt no, like the it was guest be is worth paused. It to. says pause. The guest will be back soon. It says oh, pause. I get you. I get you. Angelo is lumberjack in the queue. I have no idea who lumberjack is. It says American lumberjack. Is he in the queue? Is that the guy with the booty shorts? Yes. Oh, okay. Hold on. I don't know. I can't see. No, I don't see anyone. Okay, because Mike Patriot said he wanted to talk. I don't know if he was referring to me or get in the box. So, 
But yeah, um, our, I think a lot of our leaders and people that have a microphone <laughs> tend to pit us against each other. And I don't believe that either side has it 100% right. Um, I hear a lot of extremes on one side and the other, and it tends to um, divide us. And I'm not saying that we don't have division. Uh, I'm just saying that it doesn't help us unify and come together as a country and understand each other when we have... Um, a lot of leaders refusing to do that. Well, for example, and I don't like to use examples because then it's because I'm a progressive and my examples are going to sound skewed. They're going to sound anecdotal, right? Right. They're going to sound that's the skewed. Words, that's the, okay. the left. That's a leftist word. Anecdotal. Everything right. you say is anecdotal. Right. And you also have, and you also have white guilt. Uh, well, not really, but okay. You guys, I, I don't really argue with people. They can say whatever they want to say. It's, you know, I, but I mean, for example, like Republicans just took over in the House, right? Yeah. And, and they've been telling, they've been talking about how Democrats ain't been doing nothing for the American people for like the last several years, right? And what's the first thing they bring up for a vote to, to conquer, you know what I mean? I, and I'm not even going to bring it up to, to, because I'm not here to trash one party or the other. I'm here to have so, conversations. So usually there are, there, the Republican talking points are illegal immigration, um, letting uh, keeping criminals in jail, uh, keeping our Second Amendment, um, you know, our constitutional rights and, and just... Um, Things that make sense, you know. I, the illegal immigration is a big problem right now. Inflation I agree with you. A, I agree inflation, with you, sir. Inflation, inflation affects everyone, no matter if you're a Democrat, progressive, Republican, conservative. It, you know, these things are affecting everyone, whether people like to believe it. Here's where it gets one hundred percent. What I was the, saying the was, hold on, the political views divide us because you were talking about division, right? Right, the vision right. is caused because of the political views. One, one, one person wants one thing and is all the way this way, and one person wants it all the way the opposite. So there is that gap is very big. It is, but democracy has always come to meet in the middle. Nobody has ever ever got everything they wanted. That's always the democracy, way it's been. Democracy is mob rule. We're not. A no, democracy. it's. We're, that's conflating words. Republic, democracy, argue, argue, argue. Okay. We're, we're a constitutional republic. That's we, we are a democratic republic. And we can sit here and argue about it, but I mean... We, we base everything on our constitution, correct? Right, but we vote in our house on a democracy and we vote in our senate on a republic. So you can call us a democratic republic. That, All right. So I mean, and that constitution can be amended. The constitution should technically be upgrade updated, but we are never going to get to that point unless we actually stop arguing with each other and actually get people to work for the people instead of putting money in their back pockets. But well what said. I was trying to say is, Mister Mister Nice Guy, you're exactly right. Those are conservative principles. But if you look at the first thing the House voted on when they became when they got in control, that nothing they voted on had to do with any of those principles, right? So what what I mean is, the principles that we stand on is not what the people in leadership are working on, and that's on both sides. Okay, so what I mean is, is that they don't want me and you to stand together and tell them all to get their shit together. Right. And, mm -hmm. and I say this a lot. You should not have to look at Democrats and tell them to get their shit together. I should not have to look at Republicans and tell, their shit, tell them to get their shit together. You should be able to look at your own people. I should be able to look at my own people and tell everybody to do their damn job. Shouldn't we? I mean, 
Like if you, yeah, for example, agree, whatever your job that. is every day, right? Whatever your job is, whatever you work at, when you go to work every day and you put in eight hours a day, nine hours a day, and you have somebody you work with, we all know who we work with. We know who puts in the work with us, who's, who, who goofs off, who doesn't follow safety protocols, who does everything right, who knows how to do their job who steals lunch in the lunchroom, we know who does what at work. Do I, Do we agree on that? If we okay. know who yes. we work well. with, then we know who is doing their job and who's not doing their job. Right? right. Yeah. So call yep. your own people out and quit pointing the finger at everybody else. I do. I always, I always call out my own party. Right, uh, and, and, I, like and I'm not. down for that too. So, for example, to, if I, I think there's a Democrat standard, being a foul mouth, I should call out my own Democrats. And yes. the same thing for your party. Uh, we yeah. should be doing our own our own work I've is what I mean. That. I've been doing that. I've been doing when something. And what should up, we call I'll the say. Republican Party out for? What should we call them out for? Well, the same thing we call Democrats out for. If they're not well, doing well, their like job, what? right? Like, like what, for instance, like what? Like there has to be a specific that I would have to call them out for. All right. Well, let me ask you this. How is it going to benefit the American people to find out or what we're going to do about Hunter's laptop? No, I'm serious about that. Because, I'm serious about that. Because, because there might could be connected to yeah. everything. Because okay. there might be something in there with his father. So if there's okay. something in there with his father, then that means there was ties between the president and Ukraine. So we have to look through it. And they're investigating only Joe Biden. They can care less about Hunter. Okay, I'm down for that. So what if Joe did something? So and then and then we go through and you guys go to impeach Joe. All right. And say it goes through the house and you succeed. Say you do the same thing we did to Trump and you go through and you impeach him in the house and you and we go through the Senate, which Dems have the Senate right now. Where do you think that's going to go? Nowhere. Right. So so if we can figure yeah. that out sitting here in our seats, then, you know, these these goofballs over there in D.C. know the same damn thing. Right, so, but if it's true, then then we the people have to act. And that's when we the people get involved and enact our constitutional right. Because if there's 100% fact, there? undeniable, beyond the reasonable doubt, then we have to act. Right, what I'm, what I'm saying, hon, is we can do investigations without making this a big public deal. We've always run investigations without making it top-notch priority for our government and people. The House needs to do their background investigations while they work for the people in public to let us know that they're working for us. And if the, the same thing goes for Donald Trump. If he did something wrong, I want right. him prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. Well, right. And, and the same thing with Biden and the documents in this garage or whatever the hell that is. Find out what's going on. If you did some dirty shit, you go down. I'm fine with that. But I'm my tired of is, everybody in D.C. and Washington dragging this shit out forever and all day. And then we don't get anything done. OK, my, pro my problem is they've had this doc. He's had these documents for years. These are supposed to be the smartest people in America. And you're telling me that the archives didn't know he had them and that he forgot he had these documents and that they were left in the garage. How do we know for the, all those years that he had them, he didn't sell them off to China? He didn't give them to you know Russia or Ukraine. How do we know that? We don't know. And how are we going to prove that now? This is why we need to a hardcore. And then this committee that was picked, let's face it. It's 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 another hand picked committee, liberal committee that's not going to do nothing about it. Just well, like they hand picked themselves with Trump committee, that was all hand picked Democrats. I don't. But agree. see, we I have to, we have to talk about way. it because I think they were secure. Some of what you said made sense, and some of it was a little bit of extrapolation. All right, so. 
So when you say all Democrat liberal committee, I can say, well, if we're talking about the January 6th committee, I can explain how that ended up to be. If we're talking about something else, I could say, well, okay, you, you have a point. We need to talk about that and understand how things come to be because who, whoever's giving you your news is giving you one side of the conversation and the person giving me news is giving me another side of the conversation. And unless me and you have complete and total conversations like we're having now, we're not going to hear both sides. Okay. And, I, and, the I watch why, and the reason why Republicans didn't want to get involved is because of the fact that he said peacefully protest and fight for your rights, yes, which we all know that's been used for years, and that's a metaphor. When somebody says fight for your rights, it doesn't actually mean fight. It's a metaphor. Okay, there's nothing he did. Because he didn't respond in a timeline they wanted him to doesn't mean he was guilty of inciting a But, violence. honey, because you didn't watch any of those hearings, you didn't see that it's so much more I than didn't. that. It was all made up lies. It was you all didn't made up hear? Lies. The, what do you think about the documents the one, the one from the, the states? Jumped, the one where he supposedly gra- jumped over the steering wheel and tried to No, hon. What about... That, that was a lie. What about the electors from the states? Everything, if it was a lie, he would have been prosecuted already. Don't you understand that? It would have been done and over. But you're not answering me, hon. It was a what, lie. What about the forged electoral documents from the states? What forged electoral documents? Then you did not watch the hearings. Yeah, I don't want to waste my time because if it was there's forgery, then, then you then lied I'm... to me. You're not in an actual civil conversation where you're being respectable to me and telling me the truth. It you just lied time. to if me, Street. You just t- showed me another reason proof. not to respect you and treat you in civil discourse like I if am supposed to. Proof. I'm not even if... talking to you anymore, Streets. You if just showed me that you proof. treat me less than equal, that you treat me less than an equal citizen in your eyes. You treat me less than human because you just lied to my face. If they have any A lot of that going around, ain't there? He would have right, been but jail. if I don't call it out and put it in check, then I am call not being true to myself. Check. You put me in check with, with, with what? No, I'm not putting you in check. I'm putting is? in check my own... I respect myself more than to talk to a liar and expect to continue a conversation with someone who's not being honest. Okay, well, there's the door. See your ass out. Bye. I'm not the host. He did not ask me to leave. Bye. You, you don't like it? You can leave. He's not bullying. Bullying is where I trap you and you can't leave. You can leave so you can exit the bullying. I did not if say anybody done. was bullying me. Am I bullying well, you? Think you? I'm being rude. you think I'm being rude to you? No, I didn't you say you I'm were being rude. rude. I said you were being a fucking liar. Right. You think I'm being a fucking liar. If I was a fucking liar, the man would have been in handcuffs already. So let's stop. Let's stop. Let's stop. Okay? If That's exactly what you're seeing. You, what you're saying, saying Rosebud. Let's stop. Let's get to the bottom back now of what's going on in real I life. I told you not I'm not delusional. talking to you anymore. You lied. Not in delusional, not in delusional world, reality world. And the reality is, fact of the matter is, he did nothing wrong. He didn't Does say you know attack the Capitol. Sure. He didn't say. You bring said arms. you watched the January 6th hearings. You lied to me. Therefore, I can't trust anything you say. Okay, I, can't, I have to sit here and say I didn't watch the whole thing, but I watched bits and pieces. If anybody sits here and says they watched the whole entire thing, you know, you're all lying because nobody's going to have the patience to sit through all that. I watched all nine hearings. Thank you. Okay. And you watched all nine hearings of a narrative that was. No, I watched testimony from individuals. It was all Democrats. It was all Democrats handpicked on who they wanted to testify. Why wouldn't they let, why wouldn't they let the secret service man testify? Why wouldn't they let? Streets. Why would they let Streets. him testify you're, where you're... he would have said no? Because he openly said no. He did not jump to grab. The how would you? How would you know that the Secret Service testified because or not if you didn't publicly. watch the hearings? 
because he said it publicly. He said, no, he did not go to grab the steering wheel. And he said he would testify to them and let them know. And they didn't even ask him. They didn't call her up. They let what's her name just spin that narrative. And that was the end of it. Streets, Rosebud watched nine hearings and she's respectfully and calmly bringing the information to us. I think we ought to show her the same kind of respect instead of trying to her shut out? her down like you're doing. It's, it, it's, Am it's, I cursing her out? Look, you're, sh you're shouting her down. You're discrediting everything she's bringing when she did the work and you didn't. Am I calling her a name? So Why I'm not being to? disrespectful because Why I'm speaking loudly and enthusiasm. Okay? And the fact of the matter is I just gave a great point that when that lady came up and testified and said Trump went to grab the steering wheel, he tried to dive over the divider and grab the steering wheel, they all believed it. And then when the Secret Service agent Could came Could you tell on, me the name of the woman that did testify to that? I, I forgot her name. It was such a while ago. I actually know her name. Okay, so thank you. Then please inform of her name. What's her name? Cassidy. Okay, so if Cassidy, Cassidy actually testified that the person from the White House told her this information, and then the individual from the White House testified to that information in another grand jury hearing that has not been heard by the January 6th committee. <laughs> However, if we go back to what was heard during the January 6th committee, Cassidy testified that hearsay, which is not admissible in court, that she was told by another individual that, that uh, President Trump wanted them to turn around and go back to the Capitol building. It was not safe to do so because there were not enough uh, security personnel with that many people at the time. They refused to take him back to this Capitol building. But he his didn't want to go service, back to the Capitol building. His Secret Service personnel told him no and refused. Trump said, I am the president. You will take me back. And they said, no, sir, we will not. And, the and they took Service him to the White House against his wishes in the because end, in the it was, him, said it that was, was not he never safe said that. for him. And the Secret Service agent that was willing to testify to say, no, that's all a lie. It never happened. They didn't let him testify. How would you know that when you didn't watch the nine hearings? Because he was on the news speaking about it. He said Trump never said that. Trump never asked to turn around. Trump never tried to jump the wheel. So if a man who was there firsthand... Has the so explain to me then, since it. you know all this, there was an actual reason why they said it couldn't have been possible. And then it was out afterwards explained how it could be. Tell me physically why that was, since you know so much. Explain to me why a Secret Service agent would lie about that. Secret Service works for the president, by the way. Secret Service does not work for the government, per se. They work for the president. Uh, it is a fact. If the president committed a crime, the Secret Service would be working in his benefit to protect him. They are not here for us. Secret Service is there for him. They protect him. Secret Service is not here to protect the law. They're not here for to, to protect me and you. Secret Service is here to protect one person, the president or the, of the United States or the person they are assigned to at the time. They are not here. The only thing they did wrong was that when they were asked or they were mentioning messages, they lied and they deleted the messages. That is the only thing they did wrong. And if they lied under oath. Other than that, they are under no obligation to do absolutely anything but to protect the president of the United States or the person they are assigned to. Period. End of stop. So if they tell you something on the news, they tell you something anywhere else, all they got to do is say, I'm doing my job protecting the president. That's it. 
There's, there is no other thing. To be honest with you, to be honest with you, I'd like to have seen more uh, security at, um, at, at the building at J6 <clears throat> and a few more outhouses too. Um, but I will, I will also um, embellish on what I said before. There was a lot of talk about how Cassidy's testimony could not be true because they said it would not be possible for the claim was that Trump reached up um, over the front steering wheel to try to turn the steering wheel around to go back to the Capitol building. They said that that would not be possible because in what do they call it? The monster, the beast. They said in the beast, the beast was too big for him to be able to do that. Then they found out later that the car or the vehicle that they were in was not the beast, but it was the SUV. So then they found out that the actual testimony was possible. So that was the reason, one of the reasons why her testimony was almost immediately dispelled. And then they had to turn around and go, wait a minute, we got to go back because the car that was actually what she heard this about wasn't the beast. It was the other one. So that was, that was another thing about the testimony. So, um, but look, I'm not going to sit here and say that and guilt, guilt this or guilt that. Okay. And I'm a progressive. I'm not going to sit here and say, I love Trump. All right. I'm just going to tell you what I heard at that hearing. I know why there were only two Republicans at that hearing. And I've been watching this whole thing from the get go. So, I mean, if it's something somebody has uh, ulterior information on, I'm willing to hear it. I'm not up here to, to try to hurt Republicans. I just want everybody to know the truth. Okay. Just a, now, just a few things, Rosebud. Sure. When I when you get when you're done. Sure, sure. The seek the seek the Secret Service doesn't work just for the president. They are assigned to protect the president. They are under the Department of Treasury. Well, they're for, so for they are whoever they're they assigned are to, the though, government. right? Right. But they are the Department of Treasury. They are the government. And I, January 6th is not my big issue. I want to go back to something you said a few minutes ago mm -hmm. about the Republican majority in Congress, what they're doing, not, nothing for the American people in the first few days. They changed the rules so it's not like the good Donald Nancy Pelosi had. They want bills to be read before they're voted upon. They want to get rid of 87,000 armed IRS agents we don't need. They're making the promises the American people voted for. And on the IRS, say, can I ask you something not, though? Yeah. On the uh, yeah. eighty-seven thousand IRS agents. Now, from what I understood, those are not all armed IRS agents. Some of those are IRS personnel that you know, maintenance personnel, paperwork personnel, and uh, computer personnel. And a lot of those people are replacements for baby boomers who are retiring. Is that not the case? Then. Well, then they wouldn't be new. You would just be through attrition. You wouldn't need to have 87,000 new. They they come, They said they were new. If you so, I mean, but if you've got I'm people okay retiring, you have we to hire new people, people, right? But the position is still vacant. You still have 10,000 people, 5,000 retire. You still have 10,000 positions. So what's the point then? Point of what? Of 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 this banding the IRS is eighty seven thousand working agents. What is the point of doing that? What's Do you the point of hiring eighty seven thousand new agents? Okay, no, 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 new st st stop. It's eighty seven thousand. Rose said it. It's facts. I have a computer. I have Google. You guys all have Google. So let's go straight to facts. Eighty seven thousand through attrition that are coming in, plus the ones that we need that are going to start going after. The tax cheats. I paid taxes. I'm assuming all of us on the page have paid taxes. Is it fair that we pay enough taxes? Hey, Rose, is it fair enough that we pay taxes and everybody should pay equal, at least equal amount of taxes that we pay? Yes or no? <sighs> yeah, that's not, I don't, think that, I don't think that's the problem. He's a... Uh... Eighty-seven thousand. So, wait, 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 wait! I got, I got three people. So you're the one. Eighty-seven thousand. We have one person respond. He's an eighty-seven thousand agent 
added on to the agents that we no, have. No, no, no. I mean, okay, they're so not replacement agents. They're not streets, replacement. Streets, streets, streets. We I'm don't have 87,000 new streets, agents. Streets. No, 87,000. Streets, retired. you've been very okay, disrespectful look, 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 look. over I'm this last week. Simple. Mr. Streets, Rose addressed this before. I'm giving the moderator respect. I'm having a conversation with you about facts. Let's not start throwing out conspiracies or whatever. Start These are facts. Theory. I am telling you, okay, here's so the show fact. Me. Look, look, look. See, here's the street. fact. 87,000 IRS street. agents did no, not retire. I didn't want to bring this up, but Streets was okay, very, very nasty to somebody, a uh, person of color earlier this week. That's a that's a problem because you know he doesn't he doesn't want to listen and understand it again. Here we go. IRS okay. agents did not retire. There we go. Seven thousand IRS. Mister Nice streets. Guy, I know you're fair. Can somebody, can somebody put up the actual Google facts because he continues to say the same stuff. Can I? Guy, you have you can flip your camera around and show me on your computer where you get that information from. Can you do that for me so we can continue having an adult conversation? Like Bro says, we're trying to bring the facts to the table so we as Americans are not continuing to hear Newsmax, Fox, CNN, MSNBC, and all the other. Bull crap that's out there. Greg, so if you are Greg. willing to in this conversation, let's be real about it. I'm not I, just, I just want to say one thing. I want to say one thing since you guys have been talking. I'm 42 years old. I don't know if you guys are older than me, younger 55, than me. 55, buddy. Okay, so 55. 58. So in your 55 years of living on this planet, have you ever seen anybody hire 87,000 people? Yes or no? It's a simple question. Uh, I'm going to say this in the best honestly. way possible. In the best way possible. What are the numbers right now for the hiring rate in no, the United States? No, no, States? That's, that's a deflection from the left. I want a yes or right. no. In your lifetime, in 55 years, have what you is ever the reason? seen I'm, I'm gonna this happen this you. in your lifetime? I'm going right. to say this to you. I'm going right. to say this to you in the best way possible. Okay, stop. Yes, Again, me. you're not answering. Let me answer him. Let me answer you him. Took the mic. Me. You took the, you took the, me. So the question. You see, he won't let me. If you want me to answer the question, I will. I give you respect, moderator. Never have I seen in the IRS 87,000. I agree with you, but let me finish. Thank you for that, for acknowledging that and being honest. I Thank you for that. And I agree with you. That That is a simple answer. You see how easy that was? Have I ever seen it? No, because I, in my 55 years, I've never seen the IRS in any movement ever. This is the only time that we as Americans are actually seeing any movement within the government. Yes or okay, no? Okay, Ray. Ray, can you give me? Can you give me how many? How many IRS agents? I mean, how, I don't know much about it, but enlighten me. How many agents do they normally hire? Is it every year? Is it every ten years? Is it every five years? What is the normal throughout your fifty-five years on this planet? What is the norm? My I'm man? gonna repeat it again. Yeah. What's the norm? Due, 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 due to due Read. to federal. Who's that? Who's somebody's read. talking? Somebody want to speak to him? I'll, I won't say Why anything. Don't you read. I did what you said. Well, uh, I, he asked from, me a I question. Have it, so I have it too. To stop, so I, I have it read, too. I'll read. That's from Whoever Forbes. wanted to provide me with actual facts of, of, of the amount of IRS agents when they're hired, what is the norm? The okay, norm. now oh, the norm norm standards. Let me ask you a question. Okay. What does government do, like in my town? North Bergen, when we need more services because there are more people, we hire. Yes, I can agree with you that in my 55 years, and I repeat it again, I have never, ever seen this movement of government within the IRS because we as Americans are now, according to the W-O-K-E word, and I don't want to say it, have become aware of what's really happening behind X- the, the whole McCarthy situation with the seat. That will never. I sat with my fiance and said, you will never see this. You better get over here and grab popcorn. I say it. That but will Ray, never why, be why are they also armed? What's the reason behind that? Are they going to okay, storm into right, my house? Go. With the, well, I mean, Very what's going to happen? Question. How many of you guys like me have seen old movies? Right? We've all seen old movies, right? What was the biggest movie that... The Yellowstone character was in back in the day, The Untouchables. There's a department of the IRS that has, like Rose says, it's a department. Custodians, da, 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 and licensed gun 
officers. Why? Just like the, the FBI, every department, and you see it on the shows that we watch on TV. There are analysts in the FBI that don't even carry guns. They are part of the FBI. So again, I've never seen them, but now do we need them? If the IRS is going to enforce a fraud wow. law or go in with a C whatever, don't you think that our people, our people that we're paying for, if they're in that situation, don't need to go in armed? Let's just be real about that. <clears throat> that that's the reality because we are Ray, Ray, Ray you we, have we, to we understand where law enforcement, correct? Ray, no we disrespect, but you have to understand where us conservatives we want smaller government. We okay, don't I want that, we don't but, want but, hold on, we don't want to be micromanaged just like you know the Zell now you have to pay taxes every $600 I agree with you. Tra transaction. I agree with you. We're leaning towards more government control. And I, we're f deadly afraid of this. Okay, I, 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 I can I can agree with what you're saying, okay? That even in my sense, I don't like government control. I'll let you guys know. I'm on Social Security disability benefits, okay? I have to depend on the government because in my time now, my situation from my illnesses have affected me where you see me in all my videos, chair, I walk back to the chair because of the fatigue and the illness and my, my condition. I don't want to go and ask for money. I don't want to go and ask them for food stamps. I'm at heart a conservative. I was born in this country from immigrants, and I believe that if I could, as a disabled person, because I, I agree with you guys, I could do something to help myself a little more, I wish they could. But no, we're locked. We can't even do shit. We have to depend on, like right now, a lot of us got a letter saying that the lawyers that filed our cases fucked up. They took four G's from me this year. Four G's that I need to eat, that I've worked for. That's a, that's a conservative po talking point. Take away Social Security. That is bullshit. I paid into that. I, that's my government paid into. That's my Social Security number that they used to borrow around the fucking world. Do you agree with that? That if you pay into your taxes... Uh, I'm you for taxes Social Security. I'm for unions. Fucking uh, yes, I'm no. for uh, uh, social programs, but again, they're they're Literally. heavily these social programs are heavily abused. I, I agree feel with you. that anybody that should be that's taking our tax dollars should be drug tested at the very least. Yes, um, and and the people that actually need them should get them, not the people and, that and are again, smoking crack with my fucking money. I, I I I again I agree with you because you have Americans that are on disability that are on drugs, okay, let's agree to that. But if it wasn't a drug, it would be alcohol. That is mental illness. Yeah. When you're on the street and you're living like shit, or let's just say this, yeah. why is the local bar always fucking open right after a certain time? In every neighborhood or wherever, because people go to drink to happy, sad, sorrow, and I just did it for a vet that I lost this week. So, And I don't drink just to stand there and throw the shot on the fucking ground because everybody else did it. That's the way we were conditioned. That is the way that our vets come back. That's what happens when we're fucked up. What happens to you as a depressed person? You eat less, you drink more, you do drugs. So if you're on the street and you're getting a disability check, and there are a lot of vets that are out there, I agree with you. There's a lot of fucking money. I, I, listen, I, I, vote, I voted Democrat. I am a progressive. Uh, and it's no, I'm an independent. My mistake. I'm an independent. I voted for independent. Are you I sure, voted bro? for Republicans in the sure? past. I voted for Republicans in the past. I have voted for Republicans in the past. I'm not gonna lie. But let's be real, guys. We're seeing on every level just bullshit. The eighty-seven thousand, like you said, IRS agents are to fill for the next, I believe, ten years. And they're are gonna go after right. what we needed to go after. Come on, who's gonna tell me that it's fair? For Bezos, to all these corporations, not pay up. Look at what you look. Look but at the my man, my say, man. Do you know why the, do you can't tax the rich? Do you know why? Why? Because they're they wealthy. They don't have jobs to tax. They have corporations that I get right, around. But they don't. But but you but you gotta understand. You ever you ever read uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad? I'm sure you have. Yes, I have. That's why they don't get taxed. If you read it, you understand. I I have information on this. Uh, these agents they're hiring. If you would like me to share it. I, sure. See, this is well, a productive conversation. Can I finish my point first? Like before Ray, let me go get a more. Rose, go for it, Rose. 
can I finish my part? Go ahead. I brought this up and I was yes. hijacked. So, um, in 87,000, I put an article up on the screen from Forbes. It was for new, primarily to go after crypto. They want to blow the IRS's budget to $80 billion from $12 billion. You want to put that much more money in a government agency's hands that's going to lose it, fall off the table, not be accounted for? Come on. The IRS does not need it. They're not going to go after the people who are cheating. It's just, you know, this class warfare has got to end. Ray, I'm 58. I'm retired. I can barely you. retirement. God and bless you. I'm proud of you, man. God bless you. The American you. Nothing on here or in mine says anything exactly. about crypto. And people want, I would love to get rid of the IRS. I'd dump my 401k tomorrow and buy a new house. But I got to pay tax on it because when I took my 401k out 35 years ago, we were promised that, oh, your tax is going to be lower when you retire. Our taxes are higher. <laughs> there was another scam. Well, you, well, you can get what is called uh, senior citizens, right? The discount once you no. reach what six sixty five. No, no, it's going to be. I, my father out. gets it here in New York. He's you know, it's like whatever, he's almost eighty. It's it's whatever you take out. You have to take it at seventy. You no, no, I'm taking... talking about your taxes on your home. No, it's going to be. If you no, take they, they, this is perpetual out. taxes. He's right. It's perpetual taxes. Right. Once you get right. to a retirement age, you should be able yep. to. Just, I'm retired. I don't no, have you file. Anymore. You file for the senior citizen. It no, is a senior see, citizen right. discount still, on real like estate tax. Citizen. I'm sorry. It's, I'm sorry. It's called income. It's you. You. You, you pull that out. It's income. Yeah, it's but not that, assets. It's income. Yeah, but that that's considered okay. I can understand what you're saying. So if you got two million dollars sitting in a bank and that's your retirement money, you're making interest on that money. You only pay interest on that money. Uh, but still, I agree. At a retired age, yeah, you get senior senior uh, senior discounts are income driven. Not not it, it depends on, uh, uh, but I mean. You can't expect someone that is uh, elderly to pay the same amount. Of, I mean, even I remember when I was a kid, I used to take the bus to senior citizens. Used to get a, a, a discount on the bus fares, train fares. <laughs> I don't get that. That's, I don't know. If you're right, that's that's the bus fare is different than property tax. Jobs, it's like. I don't know. Maybe because well, so right, maybe maybe tax. someone has I'm to talking. be disabled to in order to get those qualifications. I don't know. I have to ask my dad. I have to ask. No, no I'm talking about income. If you just you no, I'm talking income, about so once you reach a certain age attempt. that your taxes from your house you could file, but because you reach a certain age, that's what I'm hey, saying. Hey, hey, oh, I'm, I'm not in York. Young, I'm anxious to hear from Rosebud what she dug up. Hey, I have a question. I'm pretty young. I just want to know about Social sorry. Security. Um, do you guys think that the reason Social Security isn't helping people is because it doesn't go up at the same interest of inflation every single year? Um, Social Security doesn't give people it. Well, you have a point. Uh, I think the uh, I think it doesn't go up enough. I don't think the cola is enough. It, do you basically. think that people should? Do you think people should be allowed to opt out of Social Security, take the same amount of money, and invest it any way that they want? But if their investments fail later on in life, they're not allowed to get back on Social Security because they opted out of it. No. Get him in the way. I I say yes. But that's I would say yes because I could take anything that I make that goes towards Social Security and I could triple it in the markets by myself because I have that knowledge. That's what I, that's you what your you that's that what choice. your IRA and that's what your um you know your four hundred one k and that's for. Yeah, but four hundred one k you get penalized for taking out your own money. Yeah, but if you're doing you it for retirement you and you're just money. investing it, you can do that with any money. When you when you have Social Security. Here's the thing with that, okay? If you take out your Social Security and you invest it and it's gone, when you're gone. 75, 80 years old and you have absolutely sure. nothing, so you're going to lay in the street and we're all going to watch your old ass lay there and die? No. Guys, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this for her. So she, I'm just going to clear up one part. Not when you retire. Social Security is for the disabled. I became disabled from 9 11. I'm living my disability until I get to see my union, 1199, 32BJ, uh, DC9, and the I last know, I know all those union pension. The painters union, yeah, but the maintenance the union. I, but I that's what I'm saying. Thing. So we, again, He's, guys, 
realize something. And I'm going to say this again. We're talking about math. And she said it. At the end of the day, how many Republicans are here on this page? I'm assuming that four or, th or three. Okay, so it might, whatever. What is the thing that you guys said at the beginning? You guys own the house. Why don't you go to your conservative politicians and say to them, hey, I want that every time a retiree, sir, you, Joe, I don't want to fucking pay taxes anymore. Why am I still paying taxes? Why, do, If I retired, I'm done. I have my own life. Why do I got to pay taxes? I'd like to do the same thing. You see, we have similar things. But why do the rich, like my, 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 my host said, they don't pay taxes. It's like watching the Cheers episode. Where finally the guy goes to jail at the end. Right, they... but 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 the problem is you can't. We can't. What I hear on TikTok from enough rich everybody to pay this. is they're hating the player. They're not hating the game. You see what What's I'm saying? The game that we exactly. get fucked. I'm sorry. The, no, the no. game. The game yeah. that people. Somebody put this game into play. Meaning those those loopholes of. Uh, going up to that imaginary line and then stopping and getting everything, you know, uh, great tax deductions and things that normal people can't get. Uh, those things were created by somebody, correct? I want to I wanna ask we one question. You got to get mad at the guy. Question. You got to get mad at the guy or woman that created well, well, those let's wars. Not, not the let's person not taking mad. advantage let's, of those wars. All right, let's not get mad. Let's, let's, just, let's just come to one point here and all agree on the same thing. Be Let's just say that from Obama to what we're in now, we have finally, like, we have all agree, we're seeing things that we all, all of us dislike, where our money's being spent in different, you know, again, and we don't want it spent there or we don't want the money, but our representatives are the ones that we have to vote in to do it. I'm going to ask you guys, as a track record, as a history, as a history, period, what do you see different right now in the sense of the unity of the country, more awareness of like, I'm not going to use the WOK word because I don't like the stupid and the nouns and all that shit. The reality of what we're seeing, do you guys see in these conversations, again, that we as Americans, regardless of party, forget about the fucking shit show that's going on up there and the Marjorie Greens and the Pelosi's and all that. That shit show them is them. We are the ones that are paying the fucking taxes. We're the ones that go buy the bread and the milk and get jacked with the eggs like they're doing in California. Can we all agree, really, that sure. we want change and that we're we, and we are doing it here. That's what this is what Rose said. We are talking because we're not blaming each other. We're not projecting. We're just looking at why the money is going and how we can distribute it accordingly. Is that not what we're doing here? Why don't our politicians do the same thing? You know what we are? We're mushrooms. They're Thank keeping you. us dark in the dark and Fucking feeding us that's shit. That's what I wanted to hear. There you go, brother. <laughs> and <laughs> and, and, and before we discussion. jump off of that, I just wanted to say, uh, uh, Bushy Jr. wanted to privatize Social Security before that's, 2008. That's if they would have let him privatize Social Security and we would have had the crash in 09, we would have had nothing in Social Security right now. Just both kind of saying that for robbed for thought. <laughs> both both oh, parties yeah. robbed how many trillion from Social Security with the so-called wars? Both parties. Just are we are not mushrooms. <laughs> Fucking. We, well, listen. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry to yes, say, but if, I, if I'm you a realize DJ how many mushroom end, spores we breathe in as we sit here, you might think. To I'm me. a DJ <laughs> on the back end, so I, I'm, a, I'm supposed to fly in the field, but because of my disability, so I'm a bedroom DJ. So we are bedroom mushrooms because we're all somewhere in a house doing the same thing that they want us to do. <laughs> That's right. They Yo, Ray, you're from New York. I am from New York City originally. I hail from North Bergen, New Jersey, as we speak right now. New York City. Born and raised, my friend. I, yeah, because, hey. well, because not only your 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 the way you move and shit like that, the way you speak, only other people could pick that up. But not only that, um, you mentioned a lot of unions that uh, that are in New York, DC, yeah. and all that. So that's why I also put two and two together. As, as conservatives, he just brought up a good topic about unions. How do you guys feel? Again, let's just be real about it. That in our in in my my homeland state of New York City. 
they had to go to an actual strike to pay the nurses that take care of us. Well, good wages. When again, we're discussing the same thing, the misappropriation of money. They got all that PPE money. They are for profit hospitals. How do you guys feel that the nurses, essential workers, we are the people who are out there fighting for it more for you, for me, more staffing ratios and a, and a, and a little pay hike, a little pay hike, a little pay. Give me what's worth me. How do you guys feel about that? Hey, guys, I got to go. Great. It was great talking to you. Joe, it was all of you. Better, Joe. I love you. We, we can agree and disagree, and we're still on the same side. We just got to get the right method to get us there. There you right? go. Stay away, stay away from the boogeyman. There was, hey, Don't let him bite you. There was an open seat in the 22nd Congressional District up in New York. I'm way upstate, and I thought about running. I should have ran because, man, it would have been easy. <laughs> yeah, there's it's no coming in. Right I'm now. running. It's open. It's open bro, game right now. Bro, let me tell you something, Joe, before you go. Listen to me. I, I could have had a position in the organizers, the carpenters, and the union. That's a $200,000 a, a year job, and I took my disability right before. Okay? I, if I could, I would run for mayor because, again, it's your heart and, your, and the people. And, again, I'm going to say to everybody here, just don't be a George Mentos. Okay? Like, don't go out there and say, you know, I'm the right. best of everything. Be honest. You Right here, what we saw from you, what I saw from you, regardless, I don't even know what political – Bro, that was real. That's what Americans are looking for. That's what we do. I'm happy to be back on lives and seeing this. That's the best part of TikTok. I don't give a fuck about Twitter or my French, Instagram, Facebook. It's right here that people are logging in and saying, wait a minute. There's, look, three Republicans. The guy I buried this Saturday was a Republican, hardline mega supporter that lived across the street from me. I met him in 2019. He became my best friend. And we would argue. And I would say, dude, I don't understand. To this day, I'm going to be going up the block to, to drop him flowers. He taught me to do this. And we are going to be teaching. Because it wasn't personal. Yes. It wasn't it, personal. Bro, but that is that is what the American dream is. But that, see, sometimes we make it personal. Yes. Sometimes we Too make much. it personal yep. the way we take it. If me and Mr. Right. Nice Guy talk back and forth and all of a sudden I say something personal to him that hurts him deeply, then it becomes personal. Then it becomes something more than a debate on politics because I've now made it something personal. We have to be able to say, hold up. I'm getting a little bit in my feels about this. I'm, I'm too wound up. Give it some time, drop out of the box, give yourself 10 minutes and come back. Because if we want to have conversations like adults, we can't break down like teenagers. Yes. Amen. So, 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 the, so I want to give you guys a little history on me. I, I was never into politics my whole life. I'm 42. Me two, neither. Years, two years ago during the pandemic, a stupid buddy of mine introduced me to TikTok and uh, I kind of hate them and love them at the same time for <laughs> it, you know. Uh, but um, I'm here. And uh, the reason, I, in the beginning, I was helping an old man in a nursing home. And I was getting millions of views. And I was getting very wow. popular. And then, and then, and then, I didn't even mean it, mean to do that. I was just hanging out with the dude, you know, because he's an older Someone's gentleman. Someone's in the box. A lot, of, a lot of issues and stuff like that. And I guess a lot of people uh, took that, you know, took that to heart. You know, it reminds me. Yes. People were dropping comments. That reminds me of my of my grandfather. That reminds me of my dad. I wish my dad was still here. So I guess I touched a lot of people in certain ways, and I was doing positive things. But then, as I'm doing as I'm doing these things, I um, start hearing about uh, housing as a human right. I start hearing. Um, uh, 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 abolish landlords. I start listening. So this is what I do. I'm a big real estate person. I, I, oh, okay. I, I came from nothing. I uh, My parents came here 50 years ago from Italy. They came God here the, the legal way. They got sponsored. They, they worked hard. They worked three, four jobs to fucking finally mortgage a house and work, and work 30 years for it just to get by and raise two children, right? So we didn't come up from nothing. And now, um, you know, through all that, I went to prison because 
I didn't have a role model around. My father was too busy working three jobs. No one was around to teach me the right way. So I kind of got into the street life and 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 and, and chose a bad life early on. And I was making thousands, millions of dollars went through my hands illegally. You know? Wow. And, uh, and, That's I, the and I went to prison. Story. I I from the age of thirteen to twenty. You know, I was living a rock star life, you know, and, and people can't understand what that's like. You know, what, what the rappers show you on the videos, that's what I was really living. And that's what I was yeah. infatuated with. You know, I never saved all my money. And like Biggie says in the song, all the money I stacked was all the money for bail. New York right? City. <laughs> you know, and, uh, and and I'm telling you, after that, it was a big eye opener. I was facing 25 years in prison. I uh, I uh, never snitched out uh, anybody. That's why I'm still wow. able to walk up with my head up high. I did a few years, came home, you know, learned some trades, and now I'm a you know I have a big real estate portfolio that that, wow. that you know I have 38 apartments under my belt that I currently own without any mortgage. Uh, and, 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 and the average rent is like 13 or 1400 times. 30. Wow. That's my, base. that's my base. That's my base pay. So, I mean, from going from a prison to, to not being hired and getting kicked out of jobs because of my record to now being my own boss and doing whatever I want it, and not actually having to tr trade time for money has been an amazing journey, bro. And a lot of people can't understand what that feels like. And, they and don't, they don't I, 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 I think that's awesome that you've made it that far and you've accomplished so much in, in, in how far you've made it and you've grown so much in your life. That says so much about you. And, but but, but here's here's my thing, hun. The people that you say you don't understand about the landlord thing and all that, yeah. they're experiencing specific trauma from things that they've gone through that they feel that way. And and all but, and and so I say, let's talk about that. Let's okay. So the reason why I got I was one of those people that was kind of independent. I wasn't right leaning or left leaning. I was center. I yep. would, you know, hear both parties out in the beginning. Uh, but then once I started hearing uh, the views of the left that were too progressive for my taste. Um, and, and and then, you know, obviously it was, a, I, I, I told myself I wasn't going to get into politics, politics basically until, until it started affecting me personally. And as a landlord and as an investor, uh, you know, it, it, this is trending now for for multiple years that they want to abolish landlords and they want to, you know, introduce socialism and, and maybe potentially even communism at some point. And communism, uh, you know, as we all know, that you don't have the right to own property, your own property. And I'm very scared about this whole general concept that's going on. All right. Can, me, can I ask, that's can why I, I got into you, politics, to be honest. Can I ask you a question? Because you said something again. I, I, everything else I'm hearing is the American New York dream. Everything he said from, from again, coming from. And I'm from, from Brooklyn, bro. I'm from Coney God Island. God bless you. By Coney Island, I'm from so. Jamaica, Queens. I'm from Jamaica, Queens. I grew up in, in, in Trump's hood. Literally, Hollis, Hollis Hills. So I agree with him. Like, everything he said is the New York dream. The coming from nowhere, the, the hustle, the, you know, I didn't, I, again, the most time I did was I had a party and they locked me in and everybody came and protested. My first protest, Free Ray was my engagement party. But I've never done time and I've had friends and, and, and family that have done time. So, <laughs> oh, I got, oh, okay. Oh, you changed it. I was like, what happened? Oh, I got clipped already. Um, oh, here we go. So, so, <laughs> hey, we got to do See, gotta you want to get so, along, but then you play the fringe game and you no, no, play but, things oh, that so 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 irritate is, people. This, okay, let me, uh, uh, real quick. This is clickbait. This is clickbait, all right, for my views. Exactly. To trigger people. To trigger to people. I know what I'm doing. I'm in business. Yeah. I know what it you gotta is. Drum I have a political business. science you gotta degree. Drum I know what it is. Here, you, know? Let it, you know what it is? Bring it, because at the end of the day, I'll be honest with you. These are the pages that I look at and I say to myself, what am I going to get myself into? Because, again, now that I got clipped for like from Thanksgiving and now, I'm like, wait a minute. I don't want to go in and say the wrong thing, bros. You know, 
<laughs> I saw you guys on Thanksgiving and said goodbye, and that was it. I was clipped, and they kept giving me the the the, the TikTok holdown. You know what I'm saying? So, but so no, let, let's let's talk about this landlord thing and why people feel that way. And why I, they I, want so to let get me go back of, to what uh, I look. Flipper. You get me looking up research, and then you don't have me giving you the information. So let me give you this thing on the IRS. Can we do that? Go for it. Okay. Oh, you want to go back to that? I told let you me go back because I looked it up to give you the information about exactly what they're doing with that. Okay. okay. All right. I, was pro I just want to say before you start, I was promised a lot of things in my life that I have been disappointed <laughs> with. That's all. Yes. I'm, before you start, go ahead. Yes. Well, I'm the problem. I'm everybody's disappointment in life. So happy to meet you. So, We're um, all yeah, victims. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, uh, the, uh, the figure on the, um, okay, where's my cursor? All right. The figure refers to all employees, not just auditors. Okay. The 87,000 figure comes from a 2021 treasury report that estimated the IRS could hire 86,852 full-time employees over the course of a decade with nearly $80 billion investment, not solely enforcement agents. And all those new employees can't be hired overnight. The money will flow to the IRS over a 10-year period. Quote, the reality is the 80 million boost would be spread throughout the agency with money flowing to enforcement, taxpayer services, operations, and modernization. And that's from a senior fellow at the Urban Brookings Tax Policy Center named Janet Holtzblatt. Uh, the so over 10 years, you said? Over 10, over years. 10 years. Okay, so that's roughly about 15,000 uh, IRS agents every year with, okay. throughout the 10 years. And there's more. It's I'm good with math. Yeah. That's how you go. Um, the math is good. The, the, in, the Inflation Reduction Act dictates about $45.6 billion will go towards strengthening enforcement activities, including collecting taxes owed, providing legal support, conducting criminal investigations, and providing digital asset monitoring. But the IRS has not specified how many auditors will be hired. More than $25 billion is allocated to support IRS operations, including expenses like rent payments, printing, postage, telecommunications. Nearly $4.8 billion can be used for modernizing the agency's customer service technology, like developing callback service. Roughly $3 billion is allocated for taxpayer assistance, filing, and account services. Many new hires will be replacements. Many of the new hires will be replacing staff that the IRS have already lost, or is it or is expecting to lose through attrition in coming years. Last year, then IRS Commissioner Charles Reddick told lawmakers that staffing has shrunk to the 1970s levels and that the oh, wow. IRS would need to hire 52,000 people over the next six years just to maintain current staffing levels to replace those who hire or otherwise leave. Wow. 4,000 customer service reps were hired last year. IRS is already using the new funds to ramp up hiring for work outside of its audit operations. In October, the IRS announced it hired 4,000 customer service reps to answer phones and provide other taxpayer assistance. At the time, the agency said it intended to hire another 1,000 staffers by the end of 2022. Many of the new staff would be in place at the start of the 2023 tax season, and nearly all are expected to be trained by President's Day February, which is traditionally when the agency sees the highest call volumes. National taxpayer advocate Aaron Collins expects IRS services for taxpayers to improve this year, in part due to the funding increase. Taxpayer service, like answering the phones and processing returns in a timely manner, has suffered as the IRS's budget has shrunk by more than 15% over the last decade. Collins, who heads the independent watchdog organization within the IRS, last year called the IRS service, quote-unquote, horrendous. Only about one in eight calls from taxpayers got through 
to an IRS employee last year, including to her annual report released Wednesday. And this was dated. I'll tell you the date of this. Um, the majority of new hires the IRS makes will be those who answer phones, work on processing individual, individual tax returns, or go to high-end taxpayers or corporations who are avoiding their taxes. Um, and that quote right there was from Yahoo Finance. So, uh, so let's do the math, guys. $80 million, right? That's the number. Over 10 years, is that correct? That's the number, too? So That's what they say. I watch what people do, not what they say. Okay, but that's what I, they I, say. I, I'm on your side. I'm on your side. But what she said, and again, if we actually do the numbers, again, I'm I, if, I'm, I'm, and I'm going to say it in your way. You're a wealthy man. You're, you, you have investments. I'm laughing this shit through the bank because I'm actually looking at it and say, well, by the time they get through building an infrastructure, call centers, upgrading what is existing, and the number that they're going to target and hire to deal with the, you know, the big millionaires is nothing. So again, you're looking at another. Now it also says here that um, there there have been oh, massive the decreases. Why can, there have been massive. Why Hold on, honey. Let me finish, and then I'll be done. Okay. Right. Um, there have been massive decreases from 2010 to 2019 yeah. in audits uh, from the Government Accountability Office for those who make over $200,000 because these taxes are much more complicated for people that make that much money. And they, yes. and so these audits have been dropping. He knows. <laughs> and so the law, this law is meant to target taxpayers <laughs> making more than $400,000 a year. And the reason that this is so... Uh, it, the reason that it costs so much to audit these folks is because their taxes are so complicated. They have to look go at through. Trump. That's what I'm saying. Like Trump is the example. Whatever they're going to do with Trump because of his obvious doing what he did, it's going to cost every you. Like he just opened the door to Pandora's box. That's what you don't realize. And, and me, I'm not. I'm not into all those penalties. I just want people yes. to pay their friggin' taxes. I don't care listen, about all it, that other shit, man. Just pay the taxes. Because, uh, are you, are you, huh? I'm sorry to interrupt, but uh, so can we figure out what is the annual? Uh, what is the usual? Because we we never actually answered that question. Yet. Fifteen thousand, maybe twenty thousand. No, what is the, what is the regular hiring uh, amount of people? Let me, uh, let me you, find out. Can we, for you. can we figure that out? So yeah. This way we yeah, can but match again, the two. Uh, we can, if it's fair, we're going to match remember, the two and then we're going to figure it out. That's all. Yeah, but remember what she said. Again, you're getting that, that that's a big, that's a big, again, that's a, a statistics number. Because you got to go into, you know, again, how many custodians? She said it. It's from infrastructure all the way up to the top and then the new hires. I would be more concerned of the new hires and their qualifications to deal with the tax cheats because we're still going to get banged. Whatever it is, the little guy going to keep paying every time we go and get the milk, every time we go and get the bread. And again, from the last tax height, and this is reality, up until 2027, anybody making a certain number, which is 100 grand, is going to get an increase on taxes. That would be the tax plan. That is history. You can Google that. My wife is my my fiance is taking that hit. We just talked about. Oh she goes, yeah, yeah this um, I did want to say something to you guys about Google. Um, I hear a lot about you guys talking about Google, and and as I have a bachelor's in IT, so I wanted to mention this. You're right about Google being skewed, but you're wrong about why. Okay, Google is skewed because Google is kind of like an AI. It's trying to please you. Okay. So when you go into Google on your computer, basically it's using what you usually look for in trying to find what you want, okay? Yeah. So if you always look at uh, right-leaning right, right -leaning news, if you look at things that might be more right-leaning, Google is going to try to look in that direction for you. If you are the kind of person that looks into certain kinds of science-y stuff, or if you're much more into... Um, books or some kind of this this yeah, type of algorithm. thing. 
Google is going to go more in that it's a direction. Tier two algorithm. Yeah, that's the so, algorithm. Yeah. Scary so what part. I tell two people, algorithm, every company uses it. Right. So what I that's tell scary. people, <laughs> instead of being concerned about it, open up an incognito browser or a private browser where you're not going to have any of that information that skews your uh, search. Okay. Yeah, there's, right. a, there's a browser. Right. I don't know which browser. one it is. Hey, which Rose, is the I got right. a question for you. Mm -hmm. um, are you a dentist? No. You're not. Well, you're doing a fine job of pulling this boogeyman's teeth. <laughs> what boogeyman? What's he talking about? <laughs> 87,000 IRS agents. They're not even scary anymore. I was That's what I'm saying. That. It's just. It's well, look, by the time don't get me wrong. There's a lot of things that re Democrats are scared of, too. You think yeah. we're not scared of the Proud Boys? You don't think so, that the, these people on January 6th whoa. running up to the Capitol building don't scare the living shit out of us? Going, what I've the hell was them, that shit? I've seen them. They're like five feet tall. I mean, <laughs> they're not very scary people. I mean, yeah, but, but dude, I mean, coming dude. from New York, coming from New York, those guys are nobody, bro. Under, oh, you, but you. you see what I'm saying? There are things that but scare dude, both dude, hold, sides. Those guys are soft. Hold up a right? second. Hold those guys are soft, bro. I'm a New York City guy. I got, I, listen. They I just roll with out. numbers. Anybody's tough in numbers, my man. Okay, okay. He's right. But check this out. I, I used to be at Max in Cunningham Park. I'm putting it out there. There's a park behind Forest Park that, as a teenager, they told us not to go back there. Back in the day with the BMX. Da, 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 da. Okay. He knows. You know what I'm saying? Back in the day. And there was a spot that we found. I'm going to put it like this. Toasty and Roasty. That's in the area up, up there in the Hollis Hills where, again, I was told not to go up there. And I saw it. My family said, yo, don't ever go back in there because they knew what was happening. We still had that kind of situation going on in that area. I've never seen a proud boy. I've never seen a Nazi in New York City. And you know, dude, we don't we don't play around. Like I saw the videos. The only reason they didn't attack them and go after them, because again, it was the NYPD and it's and it's do I go to jail or do I, you know, I'll get you later. Because that's how we are. But let's be real about this. And that's a fact. You just brought it up. Look, being scared to... is all in your perspective. I live no, 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 I live no, no, no. a little over an hour outside of Pittsburgh. And let me tell no. you something. The old it's folks involved, around man. in this town make make <laughs> sounding like a trip to Pittsburgh sound like you're going to the Antarctic for a month. Okay. See, this guy knows New York. Carol, you know we got to go to Pittsburgh next month. I'm very <laughs> nervous about it. I'm really not sure what. Do you know what we're going to, which direction we're going to go? Is the GPS going to be charged? I'm really, I, I mean. I say it again. I, we New Yorkers have never experienced seeing that. And in Jackson Heights, dude, you know Jackson Heights. Yeah. That is, go get yourself anything. Like, we've. And regardless of whatever, before Obama, we never had these problems in New York. Yeah, you had the occasional, you know, you know. But it was more, it was more, and boom, boom, I grew boom. up, my first friends were, were, were black and, and Colombian. You know, Bro, I love Brooklyn, Bay so, Ridge, or so shit. if anything, I was the outcast because I was considered white, even though Italians sometimes they say us oh, Sicilians are not white, we are white. It's a whole fucking debate on that, too. Well, that I, whole I thing has changed with... over time, right? Yeah. I yeah, mean, I, I, yeah. Yeah, it's the same thing. Yeah. Anywhere that the train station goes is where you're gonna get the most immigrants or the buses. Bay Ridge is still the same. I was there maybe a couple of months ago. I went through that. It's, it's still Italian. I actually had a guy. He was trying to book me to do an event there, and I was like, "Dude, we're not gonna get our people." He goes, "Everybody's here. All the Puerto Ricans." So I was like, "Fuck, you're right." And he's, Bro, sunset right. is right. Sunset is the next town. Is the next yeah. neighborhood over. It's yes, all, it's, it's all uh, Mexican from Venezuela, Ecuador, everywhere, for everywhere. It's unbelievable. That's why I say again, and I'm going to ask this question. And again, I'm going to ask this question because, again, I know we have different and of all cultures here and the different, you know, perspectives and politics. In this America, do you think in our freedom of speech that it's appropriate to have these guys and the Nazis openly showing, regardless of the fact, I'm a, I'm a WTC guy. I have my PSDD from hearing blah, 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 and me having a nightmare, which I won't even explain. That is my serious, like, and, and my psych issues. 
I can I have that issue from 9-11. I did that thing. So I know that is my so now it's now me having to come out my door and God forbid the stories of like the nightmares, like they're here in North Bergen. We've had a couple of incidents where a guy came in with an AK-47, I mean, uh, AK, uh, um, an AR, stopped from another state, and it disappeared into the news. So I saw a video already in New York City where there was a guy on a subway, and he pulled out a piece. It was on, It's on video. New York City's going back to the 80s. He can tell you what the 80s were. Everybody we knew carried a pistol. I'm sorry. That was the fact. In your back, in your pocket, we were the you know guys in the street. It was and it was we not. We were driving around with the hammer cool. underneath the seat. Are you a bat in the back? I remember the Italian fat in the back. I grew up in. I grew bat up in the Fox. back. <laughs> the bat. In a the Louisville back. baby, a big old Louisville. We pulled it out. People were like, where are you going? We still got the bat in the back. Yes, but that is what again. That is the scariest part right now. Like again, we're seeing them in Florida. They got, I don't know how many encampments there. Do you guys, again, I'm asking this question, viewers and, and you guys, do you guys think that in this America, is it okay to have these guys doing this? I mean, I'm asking the question. Not they, don't, guys, they don't serve a purpose in my life. They don't serve a purpose for me. But, but that's just the thing, right? Because 20 or 30 years ago, they wouldn't have dared say that out in public like yeah. that. I mean, when, when I grew up in the 80s and 90s, I mean, if you would have seen people be out and out racist like that, they would have been shamed out of town. Don't get me wrong. There was still racism. There was still sundown towns. I mean, I've learned a lot over the last yeah, couple scary, years man. about in, inert net racism that I didn't realize, you know, because I, I just didn't know about but it. I, I, I agree but, I mean, racism. I agree there's racism. There always was. There always will be, in my yeah. opinion. Uh, how do I say? Maybe there's still, now it's there's still much some downtown. More there's now. still a lot Maybe of racism. But that overt racism with the with the uh, those uh, those uh, uh, those lights or the pitchforks. Khaki boys and the white and shirts. <laughs> I'm like, that? I, that blew my mind. I was like, but you see, you see, they come in here all the time and they call me Guido, Greaseball. Um, those are all racial slurs, you know. I I feel that, that, that right now in, in this society we live in, because of the internet and everything, there's selective racism. They so think I'm racist. Basically, basically, it's okay for everyone to come and call me cracker. Um, white privilege, uh, whatever, whatever uh, derogatory words. Ray to, will tell to... you I'm the queen of racism on TikTok. Yes, it got labeled that. That's why I said I, I actually, after that time, I had to think back because I said to myself, I don't want, I've never been completely blocked where I had to open up a new account, but I don't ever want to go that route. I mean, Twitter, whatever, but this is different. I I'm actually gonna, have, I, my friends actually have to rally around and support me when I go live because yeah, I, 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 it's yeah, again, absolutely, I see it. and I, uh, I meet new friends and then as soon as I meet them, somebody comes in and tells them something about me and you can actually go on my own YouTube under my name. And I mean, it's, it's toxic. See, you, know, you know, I'm going to I'm going to say something because, again, from Brooklyn, I grew up in, in my neighborhood and my I, I'm going to be honest. All my friends were either Hispanic, uh, cultural, whatever, everything. And I grew up, you know, hanging out with a lot of Italian people. So I, I, I the Goombas are my friends. Like, I love the Goombas. I didn't see all my friends I, down there calling out saying we're here. We're here. We, 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 yeah, we, we grew. We, we I, grew, I, I again, I understand that because I was when I hit Queens, it was. Italian Jews, and we grew up and we assimilated in the food and the meatballs and the, and the John Gotti and you know the, the I can I understand that's why I I can be a, a, a Democrat and again now I'm an independent in the middle because I understand views like that and views like me even in North Bergen we have a lot of Italians and I got into an argument was I said yo you know that and I said what what are you talking about and I was like yo it's fact I don't care who it is we know that there is there's something for Gazy happening and it's screwing us all up because our life cycle, our enjoyment of life, we should be enjoying these things. We should be enjoying what, what this tech at your age and my age, the technology, the money making, and we're being stopped by again. And I agree, certain government, certain bullshit, certain things that are out there. 
And we were actually talking. Like, I'm happy that I got to know, um, again, my wife is in real estate, another real estate guy that's involved, that's making good money, that's dealing with the fact of, and again, I I don't know how the, the, the whole rent situation, the moratorium, it hurts. I mean, if you're a homeowner, you're a property owner, you got to eat that. That's why we haven't and got into that. We're so, back to so real this estate. This is what I want to say. So I want to go no, back. I'm just saying, I'm go giving ahead. props because I understand. So we're going back into the whole discussion from before, Rose, right? So what I want to well, I had a call. I'm sorry. No, you're okay. Um, the, 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 the real estate, uh, what was the question that you were asking, Ray? I just, my mind went off track. No, that I said that, uh, I mean, about... I, I don't, I don't, again, I, I can understand why as, oh, again, the moratorium, the, the moratorium. Yeah, you're, you're like, saying. I don't know how you do right, it. Right. I mean, at, at all, all levels, even morality, like, what do you do when you got a position where I don't want to get them or, or, or I'm not saying that you have where you as an owner of a home, I love okay. you have to say. I'm going to give you, you guys some go. facts I, because I know hard, Rose man. got that computer, but my computer is up here, Rose, right? So I'm going to give you some facts. Ready? Red states have a more uh, landlord friendly. Would you agree with that fact? I, I would agree with Would that. you agree blue states? Would you agree that blue states are more tenant friendly? I would also agree with that. So I'm in a blue state. I, 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 I've invested in Massachusetts and New, New York, heavy blue states, correct? You agree so far? Mm -hmm. So these states are not in my best interest as an investor. And I'll explain to you why. The lax laws for tenants staying at the property and me having to hire a lawyer and having to go that lengthy process, they make it very hard to evict anyone in a blue state. Now, if I had those same properties, let's say in Florida, where I could evict someone in 30 days, that is more uh, fair to me as an investor and a business. Because at the end of the day, it's still a business. Whether people like to admit uh, or not, it's still a business that I run. You might not like the business that I run, but it's still a business. So with that being said, I have to rearrange my whole life and sell all my properties because, again, of these lax, uh, lax laws in blue states that are not conducive to my needs, right? So I have to rearrange my whole life and go to a state where it's more conservative and uh, acknowledges that landlords actually have bills every 30 days coming in. So, um, and I and I appreciate you sharing yes. that conundrum with me. Yes. So let me let me share with you why some people think that landlords are gutter snipe because that is it's that is a bad term, but that is something that it's not a common it's a, it's term, a, and I didn't want to say something that would offend you, and I didn't think that would offend you because no, it's not a common term. So there we go. That's right. Um. It's a lot of people have a low uh, opinion of landlords because they believe that landlords only care about the money they bring in and they don't care about the family or the people or the human experience. They don't care about them as people or as family or as um, individuals who are concerned about family welfare. Um, and that's just what they believe because they come from a world where there are often people who do act that way. That's not all landlords. I don't believe that is a majority of landlords, but right. um, what happens is, is that there's a lack of communication between landlords and the people that they rent from. And I think what happens is we try to be, business like because that's the most appropriate thing to do we're going to have a business transaction we're going to have a contract we're not going to try to be friends we're not going to try to make it personal but there's no right. way for somebody to live in a home without that home being personal it's just not possible 
if you live somewhere and your children live there and you're eating your home meals there and and you're changing diapers there, giving baths there and and you're living your personal life there, that's a personal experience. Okay, I agree with that so far. Okay. Okay. So, so now let's get to the meat and to the meat and potatoes, right? Okay. So my bills never start start um they never end. They never forget about me. I wish they would forget about me at least one month out of the year to, to give Mr. Nice Guy a break. But unfortunately, I'm not, you know, they, they like me a lot, the bills. So they, they come religiously. So one thing I want to say before I start is, is that most landlords don't have the luxury like Mr. Nice Guy that their houses are all paid off. The small margin, the most landlords do what is called house hack. They get a mortgage for 30 years. They put a 20% down payment, whatever that may be, right? This is what most people in America do. Yes. Mm -hmm. they, and they get maybe like a duplex and maybe, you know, they live on the first floor and they rent the second floor to try to pay that mortgage for the next 30 years, right? Mm -hmm. So this right. way the bill's a little easier on them. Mm -hmm. Now, if that person upstairs misses a month or two or three months payment, that landlord is in, in danger of being foreclosed and being homeless himself. Yes. So we have to understand that the profit margin is usually none or very slim just to keep up with the mortgage, the taxes, the water bill, the heating right. bills, the electric bills, the, the, the garbage, the, uh, the snow removal, the gardening, the repairs that come with all that. So it's, a, it's a very small margin that the average, again, the average, not me, but the average landlord makes. So right, but the average landlord, and, and I thank you for sharing finish, that. Go, go ahead, go ahead. One mispayment is detrimental to the average small mom and pop landlord is what I'm getting at. We're talking about first-time homeowners that are starting off. We're, so, we're talking about maybe they might have two properties at most. Those are the your average uh, house hacker or small home investor. Go ahead. Can I can I add for this for just one second? The Go biggest ahead. reason, the biggest reason that my significant other has not jumped into purchasing a home, and now we are pushed into it because of the financial situation that the mom and the dad and the dad is in Florida, is because of one of the things that he says. One mispayment and you're done. And she's been telling me this for the last 17 years. I don't want to, you don't understand. You have to have, there is, I mean, I'm going to ask him this question, but you have to have this money in a bank. So I'm going to ask him this question because, I, again, I, I only get so much from her. Can you insure the property against default on payments? Because if not, then you're screwed because that's what she tells me. If they miss a payment, my credit goes down. I guess listen, you think the, you, well, listen, do you think the banks have compassion and empathy? Do you think so that so, so, I'm asking you a question. There is no like liability insurance against the, like the, would the bank give you an insurance like with the credit cards? Perfect example. You don't pay the credit card. Uh, the you, you, you can probably you can probably try to work something out, but ultimately so I, I think insurance. they're gonna fucking come foreclose your house. Man. So there is no there is no liability. I'm no not a hundred percent sure, but I'm no, sure you, you would have probably it. get an extension or something like that. Yeah, or... but you're not understanding what I'm saying to you. At this point, I buy a home. Again, I walk into the home, I got flood insurance, I got every insurance, I got a second dwelling, so I get homeowners, renters, protector insurance, meaning that if he don't pay the rent, I'm covered for the time he don't pay the rent. So No, that is renters that insurance. Do you know what renters insurance is? I understand that. That's just for me, for my stuff inside. But yeah, I'm saying yeah. you. That's what I'm turning it as. You I, don't, I don't think so. I got to look into there that. Go. I, yeah, if it was done, it, yeah, but if it was done, you could. That's the reason my wife won't get into it. She says, I don't want to get into it. I can go and clean the yard and do that other shit, but then what happens with the nut? I don't have a year's worth of money sitting there. The small homeowner. Now, I think Rose is talking about the big hedge fund mm -hmm. with the 20 yeah. million properties. Here's, that, my, that here's my question for the... Here's my question. All that stuff you just told me is so important, okay, to, to keep in mind, that you're on yes. such a tight budget as a homeowner or or a yes. landlord. How often do you think that information 
is shared with the person you rent to. Yes. Um, I mean, I mean, if if people are a, a long time t- tenants, like they've been they've been they've been tenants for a long time, whether it be with me, with everybody else, they're actually more informed than most lawyers. Did you know that? Right. But here's my thing. Most of the time, there is a breakdown of communication from the get go. Okay. Nobody knows what the other person is going through. Nobody understands that this guy's having a rough time from the get-go. When you go to rent a place, when you have that, to, to me, it, the application that you apply for a, a house, the, the piece of paper doesn't mean shit. When you yeah, go to rent a place, when you go to meet somebody, talk to them, they go to look at the house. I mean, when I go to look at a place to rent or, or something I'm going to go buy, it's the conversation. It's talking to somebody. Ask, what? oh, uh, you got a kid, you know, what you're going to do, you know, what their life is about, finding out about them, finding out about the landlord, having that conversation back and forth, feeling the vibe, because I've walked away from those conversations going, I would not rent from that person if you paid me every month. No, I agree. Okay? I agree with you. So, but at the so end of I the mean, day, you could do all that, but. But what I'm saying is... You're taking a gamble. You're taking a gamble. But what I'm saying is, in that conversation, you have to kind of feel easy about things. And before you take that step, you know, you have the conversation. Look, I like you. I want to rent to you. But here's the deal. I don't have extra money if you miss a rent payment. If If I bring you on here, we're coming in together on this like bologna and cheese or or pb and j if you don't pay your rent we are done because my ass is going to be out there with you okay you bring it together like that and if you and that person are both confident and you both kind of it's it's all about the whole package i mean it's hard for me to to talk about it and and get somebody to understand, but it's I the flow. The same, it's, it's the ebb Rose. and the flow of how you. I be. I do that, Rose. I do that. I tell them, listen, my properties. A lot of them are out of state. I tell them right off the jump. I'm an out of state landlord. When you call me, I will always answer your phone calls. You know, you can call me three in the morning, four in the morning. My phone is twenty four hours a day. But you have to understand, I'm still out of state. I will call a plumber. I will call an electrician. I will get the job done. But again, I won't be personally there, but I will have, I, you will have access to me 24 hours a day. Right, and see, that's awesome for you to be able to do that with I'm me too, you know? Right. So, I mean, when, you, when your tenant knows, that's the ground they stand on when they move in. When they know that if they miss a rent payment, the shit's going to hit the fan because then if they come to you and they say, I don't, I, they'll come to you early. I don't think I'm going to be able to make my rent. They're not going to wait until halfway through the month and say, I don't have my rent. They're going to right. come, they're going to know the financial situation is going to be an issue and they're going to come to you as soon as they know there's going to be a problem because that's the kind of relationship you have, right? You have a road. Rose, that 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 is okay. I understand where you're coming from because you're coming from a emotional relationship with your tenant and the whole nine. That's respectable. But at yeah. the end of the day, and I say it as again, I I'm an independent, and I agree. And, and and again, I'm saying it because the comments are popping up, and it's actually true. If my situation for me to get into a home with her is that problem, we're looking into getting a two family, whether it be in Jersey or it be upstate New York, somewhere where we can have a place and stay in this rent control apartment that we live in condominium because it's the mom can come here but the same situation applies the question comes up what happens if i can't pay the rent i'm done it's over and again you're not seeing people that are not empathetic because again my uncle had two homes one in queens and one out in long island he had a tenant that was you know a family that was already there he said listen you guys keep paying the rent I don't care because he's building equity. That, like he said, the whole game is equity. I, this is a long-term investment. I'm good with it. But the moment that he doesn't pay the landlord, he's done. 
And again, big headphones, yeah, we have the pushing. I have that happen where I live. They intentionally do certain things to make the tenants want to leave in a year. No heat, no services. Like he said, I'm on the services. I got a guy. I take care of it. If that's 100%, then there's no excuse. But then it comes back into the money. Like, again, during the whole COVID situation, there was funding. I'm pretty sure he's got applicants that have applied for funding. And did they work? Because I go, I have family that work and didn't pay rent. I have. I called so, them out. So this That's lady cool. stopped paying me. This older lady, I figured she's an older lady. She's not going to cause me any problems. No parties. No crazy noise at night. You know, I, I figured maybe, you know, this could work out. She says, uh, she starts off saying, I have a little dog. She showed me a little chihuahua. So I love animals. I said, listen, I usually don't, but show me the dog. She showed me this little cute chihuahua, right? And she's telling me this sob story. Oh, you know, the dog is blind. And she got on my compassion side. That's why sometimes it's not good to be compassionate. Not, you know. It's so she's like, you know, she got on my on my feelings, and she's like, "Look at this dog." I said, "You know what? No, no problem. I'll put it on the lease. One dog, no problem." Do you know? A week later, she put in three fucking pit bulls. Three pit bulls were in the house. I show up to the house. These dogs are ready to rip my head off. I'm like, Dude. lady, what's going on here? She's like, oh, first she played it off. Oh, these are not my dogs. These are my 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 son's dogs. They'll be gone tomorrow. I show up again. They're still there for a week. Dude, they, you know she would have gotten like? an eviction notice for violation of her lease. No, yeah, then man, it I'll... gets worse. It gets worse. There you go. Here then comes the problem. I do a home inspection. She's a hoarder. She's got everything up to the ceiling. Clothes, <laughs> dishes up to the ceiling. Uh, Fire dirty. inspection. It smells like the dog hasn't been out. Those dogs haven't been out in months. They're shitting everywhere. They're in a week? Everywhere. Huh? I don't Hello? even know. I, it smelled like that. <laughs> it smelled like feces in there. It was so bad. Three dogs. You don't take them out. Yeah. Yeah, then then the health department came because the tenants upstairs were, were called the health department. That's so that was another problem. issue. The health department had her clean up somewhat. Then after this is like the first month, like, you know, and uh and she uh stopped paying rent. She stopped paying rent. One month she paid and then she didn't pay no more. Then she went, you know, I uh kind of we I kind of agreed. I'm like Maybe it's not the, the dogs. <laughs> do the program, you know, do the program, you know, they're helping people out. And then finally, after a year, bro, I had to wait a year without a dollar. They finally gave me like uh, a little over 10 grand to stay. But you had to put up the money for yeah. whatever the nut was. That's yeah. the problem. Yeah, I for a year. One home, you have one tenant. Or, you know, the whole issue. But then if you got multiple, now you're in a different. And that is that is a game that you already have to figure out. Like, she, he's, you already had no emotions. How There's about vacancy? Rental. Vacancy rate. Vacancy rate. You think all my apartments are always rented 100% of the time? No. That's no. part of the game. That's part of the business. I know, hon. I'm not, I'm not trying to solve all your problems. I'm just trying to, you know. No, but, oh, but, but you clarity. see, but now you got a little more understanding. Hopefully, yes. I, these, from, these are things from, I've been aware from, of. I know there are terrible tenants out there, hon. I was just saying, from, you know. From, if listen, you're... Last year, Rose, last year, two tenants. And again, I don't want to say because they were on Section 8. But they died in my property. They OD'd. Two oh, people wow. died. And the cops had to come and break my door and take all these people out of the home in body bags. It's crazy, bro. Now, see, the nice people yeah. like you, though, are the ones that suffer because there are landlords that don't care, won't fix anything, won't help anybody, yeah. won't do like anything, that. right? Like that. We've got folks that, that will call and say, my water shut off, or my pipes froze, or my heat won't work, and their landlord won't won't do anything, you know, and then and then you got people that have that trauma, and then they move into a place like you, and you're such a sweet guy, and they're like, "All oh, landlords are shit." Well, Mr. Well, you know, nice Guy just, just gets shit on because he's the nice guy, but all the other landlords were shit, right? You know. Let's go back to the reality to what this is. This is a a, a country that. In this country, it's again. I'm sorry to say it. I love my country. I, I would, I would, I want to retire in Costa Rica, but I love this country. I love my country. I love my diversity. I love. I have to live close to New York. 
I can't. I can't go further than North Bergen because I still got to see the sights. I can go to Weehawken. I'm a New Yorker at heart. It's just where I was raised, uh, born, and, and I have the history. But again, as America, we should find a way to, again, with all the land that we have, all the property that we have, you know, abandoned buildings, let's get people into homes or properties. I mean, you're a New York guy. What's the number right now? With honestly, the honestly, honestly if we don't put capitalism in its proper place and stop letting it overrun everything, it's going to ruin us. I, I mean, the America, America point. has lost our country the size of Iowa to foreign countries buying property. We have lost landmass the size of Iowa to foreign Rockefeller countries. Rockefeller and what are they old. doing with these properties, Rose? I don't know. But Center. now that they own that Waldo. property, they don't have to tell us shit, right? Because under our constitution, if you own land, it's yours. Nobody, you don't, yeah. as long as you don't break the law, you don't have to tell nobody bullshit, right? Well, I mean, are they built? Are they making businesses out of them? Because that's public information. Are they? Are they doing what? Secret shit? I mean, what are they doing? I'm not. I, I don't know because I haven't been able to look into that. That if, if I get into Congress, I'll be able to get into more information on that. But just as a citizen, I don't know. But um, I just in yeah, conversation to what you put out there. Let's let's do the Joe Hunter Biden for prison. That's 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 what everybody's looking at. They're jumping in and out. Let's get into it. So what's the story? Joe Hunter and then uh, the Biden for prison thing. What do you guys feel? I think any any president or former president that does any illegal activities should be prosecuted at the fullest extent. Right. Crime um, committed. Go to jail. Yep. Yeah. You right. commit a crime proven in a court of law in front of your peers. You get to go to jail. Period. End of story. Next person takes over. That's how politics works. That's how the Constitution works. But I don't want to hear any BS. I don't want to hear garbage about it. If you got proof, I want the proof. The fact. I don't want to I hear. Mean, I, I, I don't want to hear the snuffleupagus form of it. I don't want to hear the, the imaginary the fairy tale <laughs> about how somebody was sniffing Johnson and Johnson shampoo off of the dog hair in the backyard behind the curtain. Okay, I don't so, want to hear about that. I want to so hear let's, the let's, evidence. I want to see the proof. Yes. I want to see the actual. What the fuck is going on? I don't want to see. What's the story with the? The bullshit. So what's the story? That's that's what I want to hear because right now, I mean, I was on Newsmax yesterday and I got a whole bunch of clips that I threw on because I had Jim Jordan on. I got to see him. I got to see Tucker Carlson, the social uh, social truth uh, CEO, and and I got to see a whole bunch of other people. So now it seems that the narrative is that that apparently we don't want Joe in the office, obviously, and that now the mass media is pushing Joe out, and there's another guy coming. And that, again, it went back into the Biden that they, wait a minute, this is the fun part. Again, I'm going to have to say fun to me because apparently the documents they found already, since they're so classified, they already know that it's Ukraine, it's Russia, it's China. And it, here, so, here's the thing about the documents, okay, and that, that cracks me up. Biden wasn't president. So the only documents that were under his complete purview back then were documents created and completely purviewed by the office of the VP. So unless they were VP documents classified by him, for him, and only by him, he is the only one that was able to, cla to classify or declassify those documents. So who else classified them? Who has the stamp of memorandum on them to classify them, and why did they not come back and get them? Well, that's a good. That's a good. Actually, that's a, that's is actually almost on point. But I will add this: there are three types of classified documents. I'm going to my TikTok now because I have it on here. Because again, this is where I dump and load. But apparently, there are three types of of of. Um, of actual classified documentation. There's the secret, there's the eyes only, and there's, the, I believe, the personal. I'm going to look it up, but I put it on my page, and I'm going to do it. But there's three types. But again, either way, if there is something there, and it shows promise, 
I don't. Again, right. I, I, let the chips fall where they president. may. Let, I, I, let the chips I, fall I where they the may. That it was put there. That somebody did it. That it was intentional. I just want to find out. You know, what are the receipts? Like the other guy. I will be honest. I, my concern is if they are that classified. What were they doing there? What was he doing with them? Exactly like the other guy, and who got to see them? Because there's a big difference between the two of them. This is oh, yeah, yeah, do the crime, do the time. Crazy. Exactly. What I don't play those no punches guy. because, because believe me, guys, if it was me, Ray, or Mr. Nice Guy that had them classified it. documents <laughs> up in my attic stored somewhere and somebody Dude. found them, our asses would be sitting in prison right now. So don't All sit here us. and think that we would be getting away with shit. So if uh, I can't get away with that shit, why should anybody else get away with that shit? Well, I well, see well they were secure because they were in the Corvette locked <laughs> in a, with, with the key. So they See, were, that's what I got to say. That's the fun part of this because I saw a picture on Newsmax where they did the Corvette. And it's on my page. They did the Corvette. And then in the back, at the end of the Corvette, there was a little, like, a pile of stuff that, you know, you have to do stuff to get the See, I can out. laugh at that. I can laugh at that. But I couldn't laugh at that <laughs> Pelosi shit where they had the underwear and the hammer and shit. You, got, you know what it is? You look. This is what I'm saying. Look at this. Like, again, there's got, this is where I got to look at it and say, okay, this has, this has to be comedy. Newsmax literally put a circle Around the documents that the little spot where you see, and I, and again, I, I I wish I could pop it up. But there's a little spot that they circle. They go and look in the back behind the vet. Anybody knows that when you take out a Corvette or an antique or a classic car, New Yorkers, you move everything. Everything comes to the left or right. There's nothing scratching doors or anything. There's no way we're gonna pull that car like that. Oh my god! I scratched the caddy. Toma! It's not gonna happen. So in the back, you see boxes in a, and they said, and hey, look. Um, and this is the exact words. Again, dusty boxes, cobwebs. <laughs> and tit for tat, tit for tat. <laughs> January. <laughs> <laughs> tit for tat, tit for tat, January 22. There was a warrant out to get information. Or actually, no, the warrant wasn't out yet. January 22, uh, there was a certain ex-president that was requested to turn over documents that were missing, and he was asked by the archives to return them, and he was like, no, I don't know anything about that. And then they sent him a nice little warrant and said, no, we are missing these documents. We want oh, you to return the them. And he never, he pretended he didn't have the documents. And then they went to Mark Lago and visited said person and said, look, bro, we need these documents. And he still said he didn't have them. And then after all that, they went and had a warrant and went in there and took the documents he said he never had. And then... They found them with his personal passport. And you know what? I'm sorry, that just is a fact. Now, we can argue about whether or not we're going to be doing something about that. Or, That's what we need to do. But, but uh, that, those, the, those right there are the facts. Look, okay. the numbers went out of it. Americans realize that we are being, we've been getting crapped on from both sides. Whatever they agreed to on one side, it was because we got no choice to agree on this side. Now, again, because of what's happening, we have a house that is that it is what it is. But we're getting and to that's see what that. I'm saying. I'm tired of the bullshit. I'm tired of the left and the right being played together. I'm tired of us on this app too, because we got people in this app pretending to be Americans coming in here, pretending to have accounts. Somebody even called it uh, something. They they pretend to be a popular account or somebody's account, and then they go in and say things and do things, pretending to be an account. And then that person gets accused of things, and then you got Americans fighting Americans over shit. And you have these bots, and you have these people. That's how we get clipped, and that's how we keep getting clipped, because right now, our posts are not getting views anymore. It's the actual conversations. And I'm okay with it, because again, like I say, this platform right now, as bad as it could be blocking us, it's allowing us to talk. And there are Americans that feel just like you and just like me that we're done with bullshit. It's just simple. 
We're and the done. thing is, we, we are four every years time into when I when I tried to say something about Chinese and Russian bots before, I got called xenophobic. I said, you know and what? There's a difference between calling out spies and calling out bullshit and being xenophobic. I but said, I have nothing, you know no is? problem with other people in other countries. I love everybody. But if you're going to you spy mean? on my ass, if you're going to try to turn against my country, I'm calling that shit out like there ain't no tomorrow. Call me the whistleblown bitch of TikTok. I don't give a shit. But that's exactly what it is. We have a majority of Americans that at somewhere we're going to meet in the middle. And that is our middle. We're not going to put up with Russian interference. Uh, Chinese interference, we're beginning to see, a lot of us are beginning to see the sham that we've been put through. So when you say that, yeah, China, China's been investing on every single rep, you go into every single senator, house rep, a commission, uh, they've been donating for years. I mean, look at the inauguration that Trump had. He had the Russians there. He had, this is going to be what it is. It's a power hit. And, and again, money rules the world. So you're going to see this. Why do we need to control the money? Like, again, as taxpayers, we need to. Why? Because we need to see. Where, look, I'm so pissed off. I'm going to say it. I wish I could have grabbed some more PPE money. Fucking $300 million for Kanye? For Kanye? How many millions more? Again, people that really needed it, corporations, people that. No. And they took it. And we took it. And we took it. We, we, again, we took it. We are taking it. Don't, that's the reality. It doesn't matter. That's why, in one way, I'm happy that the House, and again, let the Republicans keep throwing the throwing out there, and if something sticks, it might be something that sticks for our benefit. But most of the stuff they're throwing up there is, is, is for the swatter. There's a big fly catch thing, and the flies are getting caught up in there. And it's that's just, just it, too. They got us so so working against each other. The first thing that comes yes. to your mind is like, we got one guy yes. looking at documents. What is this thing with uh, Biden now? Did somebody plant something? Did somebody set something up? What's going I, on, you, you know? The conspiracies we, are running crazy. Right. We it's, want them out. It's going all over the place. Anymore. It's like, what the hell? You don't even know what's true anymore. Somebody said something this morning about if we actually knew that 90% of what we believe is true is false and the other 10%, half of it is 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 true and the other half is only false, tr half true. And it's like, whoa, Jesus. They don't care. Listen, again, Americans, these are the, we are the Americans that are on TikTok or the bots or whoever is listening. We all feel the same way. We are tired. We are the again capitalists, like my my my, my live B host, um, you know, running for Congress or running for an office like Rose. We are the Americans that are tired. You know, we need a break of this bullshit. Like you guys got to realize, you know, if 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 there is a history, and I'm sorry, I'm sorry to say it, that when we have these Democrats in the past move our country forward against deficit and problems then let's give them a chance. And it's happening. We're going to have to see what's happening. Again, we, we, we need the Republicans to start signing on with regular we the people workers. They're against unions. They're against health care. They're against Medicare. They're against Social Security. Here, here's the thing, though. We can move forward, but you can't leave one side in the lurch. We can we yes. can raise ways, wages, but we have to talk to business owners and figure out how to bring them along as well. You can't how just you can't just leave one side in the lurch. You're not going to bring up wages and then expect business owners to to just hang out. So it, it's it's yeah. just not possible, right? I mean, how many if you how have many billions can we send to space? if you have if you have a small business owner and they can't afford to pay somebody $15 an hour, but that person deserves $15 an hour to, to at least start to, to survive, then it's up to government to figure out how to work it out. That's not the fault yes. of the business owner. That's oh, not the man. fault of the employee. That's the fault of the government for getting them into this capitalistic bullshit in the first place. That's Look not the fault of the people. 
That's the fault look, of the government. Look at what she just said. That is the biggest issue that we have in New York City. And again, I'm sorry, it's the flipping of the LLCs. It's the biggest thing. What happens when you have a construction company in New York City or in the state of New York or in the United States? You get tagged and you flip an LLC. I was in a carpenter's union. Same LLC, same business, different LLCs until they decided to say, yo, that's it. You guys are not paying benefits. You're clipped. So we have tax fraud. We have businesses that are not paying their fair share of taxes. And then the other businesses are getting taxed. So there needs to be, again, a fluctuating kind of, of table for smaller business. The mom and pops, look, we got, I, I enjoy the mom and pops. I used to enjoy going into the right, and so do I. Here's the problem: instead of us working out how to have how to get mom and pops booming, we're blaming people that shop at Walmart. Stop blaming the people that are shopping at the cheaper store and find out why the store is cheaper, and we're not supporting the mom and pop store that people can go shop at. Because the reason, right? We know we already know that it's because of the lower prices because they have the capitalism; they have bigger margins of money to purchase a lot more so they're getting their their prime rib at ten dollars for two dollars a pound and flipping it for ten the reason that we're having them invade our border countries costa rica guatemala and everything is because they're doing the same thing it's happening in costa rica where you're seeing people that are small farmers and i'm on costa rica facebook pages Throwing their tomatoes over. We need we need to start making it cheaper for small business and more expensive for big corporations. However, we do that, we need to start moving, making it cheaper for LLCs, making it cheaper for small businesses to pop up. The more you do that, but what you do is you make it easier. Do you know how hard it is to start a small business in some of these places? You're extremely yeah, hard extremely hard and it's easy as pie for walmart to just walk in somewhere and pop in another store another Why? aldi's another but tj maxx another sears it's like yeah but you're saying it Rose, you're saying it they get they, look does does, does does this gentleman next to me mr nice guy does he get any does the, the, the government say to him, hey, because you're buying property, you know, he gets a certain amount of, you know, tax breaks and loopholes and stuff. But Walmart gets the big dogs. So let's just say, just a perfect example, New York City right now has how many storefronts closed? Let's say Mr. Magic has a storefront. And he knows that he has to charge according to the rent that is in the area. 5,000, I, I don't know, the square footage. Again, I, you would know the map. I'm not, I'll leave that to you. But Let's say he can't because the small businesses, the pop-ups that are online, Facebook, doing deliveries, Telegram, that's where the small businesses are flourishing because they've realized the social media and the, pur the purchase power of Amazon delivery services. So how does he get a business in, let's say me, a pizzeria, perfect example. I want to make Nona's pizza. How do I go there to, yeah, you fucker, <laughs> but how do I go to his place and say, I want to rent that space at an affordable rate. We, we lost them. Government intervention. Hey, sir, you have a property. That property, we're going to give you for the next 10 years a tax abatement on that square footage so you can put a small business in. Right. That. It's that kind of thing we need to do and That's stop giving all the opportunities. <laughs> do you know that, that a Walmart can put a new Walmart in somewhere and not even – they don't even have to like – uh, they could just give stuff away for 10 years and it, they yes. wouldn't lose any money because of yes. all the incentives they have. And it, why? But, why do you get all those incentives, you big, fat-ass, freaking bully? Well, because they donate to political they parties. They gave them incentives. For and and, and Joe said something in the jobs. comments I want to address. He said, but let, then well, we're going to lose. Let Joe, let Joe, let go, Joe go ahead, Joe. Go ahead. Go ahead. Let him go, Joe. No. What they did is they gave they give Walmart all these incentives to create jobs that aren't really <laughs> jobs to support people. What jobs? I mean, your manager, your assistant. You no, know I'm saying you're at Walmart. Your manager, yeah, you're your right. assistant manager of Walmart, making six figures, easy. 
But what what but I'm what I'm saying is though, instead of giving them all those jobs, why don't we give folks incentive that when they leave those jobs to sm start small businesses instead, and have their own yeah, small businesses to flourish instead of these shitty ass little jobs at Walmart that ain't getting nobody anywhere. You don't bring any kind of prosperity to the country, and you don't bring any kind of uh, business or any kind of anything. You're just you're just feeding into this capitalistic bullshit fairy tale that everybody is kind of like zoned into the Rose, only reason but, but, Rose, can I say something? go yeah, ahead push go back ahead. on that a little bit sure um, i i just want to say like why are the same people shopping at these big stores because they can't the afford to shop at small business yes it's us that are making them what they are. If nobody went there, nobody clicked that button and had their package delivered to their door. Well, I'm we sorry. Conversation. I'm sorry, yes. hon. I can't afford to shop anywhere but Dollar General or Walmart. But that's the thing. Walmart. See, so we're, we're cornered here, right? So yes. we're kind of cornered. Is that we're what cornered. Saying? That's what I'm we're saying. Cornered. We have to stop incentivizing, but our our politicians have to stop incentivizing this big business. Start incentivizing small business to start booming, and then people yes. will start opening up small businesses. Stop making it so hard for small businesses. Stop making it so difficult to start and in incentivizing something on your own. It should not be hard to start a bait shop or a pizza shop or or you know, a little tiny bakery or something like right. that. As long as everything is safe and you're not poisoning anybody, let somebody start a store. Let somebody do something. I mean, uh, 50 years ago, what it was nothing to, to start something. During COVID? What? what? What happened to those poor businesses during COVID? The government shut the little guy down for no reason. Well, we let's not go to no reason, but let's say they shut them down because of whatever quarantines they expected or the government did. But at the end of the day, <sighs> what happened to the business? How bad was it they that were... the PPE money that was sent to them couldn't get them going? But we have politicians that collected that money and corporations that collected that money and yay, that collected that money and they're still afloat. That's the question. Because, again, we go back into small business. Help, yeah. not Walmart. And like she said, you're in an area so where safer you're shopping at a Walmart. Ray, it's, it's not Ray, about. Ray, I want to ask you a question, my man. Yes. You were in construction before, correct? Yes, carpenters. Okay. So, the, is it convenient for you, as a shopper, as a customer, to go to the little mom and pops when you have Home Depot and you could save a lot more as a, as as a homeowner or as an, as an investor? Is it more convenient? Let's be honest. Home Depot's very No, no, no. See, you, that, was the, that was the ticket that you said, investor. As a regular American, I was raised. My dad worked in New York City. You're going to pay more. My dad, and my dad brought from Esposito's Meat Market right on fucking That's the part 11, we want to change, though, hon. We want to change it okay, so it's wait, not wait, wait, cheaper. Wait, wait, wait. But, Wait, wait, wait. And my dad used to buy bakla and bring it home. And we used to eat in Burger King and McDonald's. And we shopped in a supermarket because we did our monthly weekend shopping. Now when you have, again, Walmart. And I've gone to Walmart. As a union guy, they would tell me, you better not go in there, bro. What is the matter with you? The guys would, they would go crazy. Yo, you went to Walmart. I'll be like, look what I got. Yo, get away from me. Because they knew the effect of Walmart back then. So let's just go to the reality. Rose, it's it's true. If I buy in bulk in Walmart, I get better prices for everything that I'm used to eating. Everything. Because I buy or in Costco or like Costco or BJ's. Costco, or BJ's. I've gone from Walmart. I don't go to it no more. I've gone to the BJ's. Now we got a Costco carding. You know why I use Costco? Because Costco is cheaper. They don't have all that BS with the Walmart and they gotta stop you with the car. I hate that. That was a that's an invasion of privacy. You gotta stop. I gotta show you. Show me my paper. I walk. I walk right by him and say, me. "Bitch, you better you, you better call the cops." I, I don't even let him see my I, shit. I, I, I say to them nicely. <laughs> I say to them nicely. Hey, I'm sorry. Your sales are so shit, <laughs> and the security guard should be doing your his job. So if he wants to stop me at the car, tell him to come. And I yep. just keep going. She gets mad. We're gonna go to jail. I will be there because when did they? They don't do it in Fifth Avenue. They uh -uh. don't do it. In 
Of Can we agree that most of the products on Amazon and Walmart are coming straight for, from China? Of they're course. Not, they're not great products that they're selling. Let's be well, honest here. We're seeing and, a lot and, of American products. And see, but what's up, there's a, I think there's a way to go around it. I just don't think we're using our imagination to figure it out. Because the way I figure it, the way churches do things whenever they buy in bulk and stuff, they come together, they put their money together, and they buy in bulk and then separate it out among people to save money. Yes. Small businesses can do the same thing. We can yeah, do co-ops. We can do different things. We can come together and, and, and beat the big corporations. There are ways to do things. There are ways to get around. The same thing with landlords. The way, the way that Mr. Nice Guy was saying about how it's so hard to crunch the numbers. Landlords can come together with a union and make sure they have extra money in case there's a, a problem with that. There's a way to come around. Let, like, I'm going to say something. In New York City, what is the representative of the realtors? Isn't it? Uh, there's a there's a specific organization you guys have. It's a realtors know. association, but it's not a union. But, but I mean, but I mean nothing has what? to be official. Of it's realtors. just four or five or ten different people saying, hey, we're going to put so much together a month in case somebody has a hard time. Somebody's tenants doing this or somebody trashed an apartment here. We're going to put a thousand here for this guy because, you know, just something to help each other out. You know, a little kid to make sure that nobody's ever really pressed. I mean, you know, I just I just think That's, there's a different there way to do yeah, things yeah, other than like leaning that. on these big corporations that don't give a fucking shit about but, us. But then that's why um, we got to tax them. That's why we got to tax them. When they don't pay taxes to the federal government, that's what the federal government money comes. And that money doesn't go to war. It goes right back into the communities. It goes right but, back into beds. It goes right back into services. And listen, the reality is that's why there are unions, because unions of people with the same common cause come together. See, there you the go region. trying to put a label on something that sounds like a it good is, idea. Why are you going to call it I'm socialism? Not putting a label on it. No, somebody in the comments called what I what I just oh. said socialism. Oh, I'm it's sorry. not <laughs> socialism to come together and make a plan for a rainy day. Dang. That's not no, socialism. The businesses. If you raise tax on the business, the corporations, I hear this all the time. Let me finish, make my point. Go ahead. Yes. Where where are they going to get that money? They're going to raise their prices. Who's it going to hit? The lowest on the economic scale. <sighs> yes, they should pay taxes, but it's going to happen. Okay, so let I me ask you a question. I work for a Fortune 100 company. Okay. And we put out price increases. I had three in one year, and I sold in the construction business. Okay? Okay. There's, there's no margin, okay? Walmart was one of my biggest clients when they build a new store. Yeah, well, it's a double-edged sword. So we're going to tax the rich, tax those people. They're going to raise their costs. There's got to be a way we can come around and close the loopholes. But there's not enough rich people to tax to solve the spending. We have a spending problem, not a taxing problem, a spending problem in this country. Joe, I, I'm sorry, but I... I... Do not buy the fact that it takes twice as much to make a bottle of ketchup as it did five years ago. I'm not buying that shit. You can go oh, ahead and float it's... that up someone else's ass, but I don't buy it. I'm not. No, I'm no. not doing it, man. But you know I'm what not. Happened? How many years do we have no in, no inflation? Okay, not one percent, which is okay. One two percent. Yeah. When it started to roll, everyone's hand came out. Okay, everyone's hand came out. So people that hadn't raised their prices in years, all of a sudden, ketchup going up. Eggs. What the hell happened to eggs? I used to buy two dozen eggs for four ninety nine at Bee Gees. Now there's seven. Bird flu happened to eggs. What do you want me to do uh, about it? Can, can, can well, I answer? I, I just want to. I just are... want to add to you for a second, Joe. Yeah, the reason, the reason, the reason that we're getting tagged with the food prices is because of this, buddy. You see this? <clears throat> you see this shit? That's a ketchup bottle. You know what size this is? This is the size that I shouldn't be getting because that's like for a month. Normal Americans, I'm just saying, we buy ketchup because we go to the supermarket. You know, you put it on your hamburgers, on your hot dogs, you know what I'm saying? Or your fucking roast beef or whatever you want. Maybe one of these. But the small one, the small size that hangs on the side of the fridge for like two weeks. And then when it's down to nothing, we put water and we do the same shit, right? Let's go. I lost money here. And let's be real about it. If you do the 
search on the internet, you're going to find that the corporations that are gouging us, again, Joe, I am sorry, I like Rose, to have to debunk that part that you said that it's because of nobody. It's because of the corporations. When the Democrats said, let's vote against this price gouging the gasoline, we heard silence on one side. Again, I'm an American. Both sides are supposed to work together. It's in my interest and my friend's interest and your interest is to get gas prices down, food prices down, and stop the gouging. We've seen this for years in Florida with the you, water. Ray, it's Ray, Florida I don't want to interrupt you. Stop, stop, stop. Let me finish, okay? So now let's go to the reality. On my feed, if you go down and you find it, I put a clip. There is one or two corporations that run every single product that we have because they are the ones. So when you're telling me that there is no eggs... In California, they've got guys on the street selling them like crack. That's capitalism. That's not socialism. Socialism is us fighting back and saying, why the hell are you charging us $2 an egg when we know that it's 25 cents? Same thing that we have at gas stations at all. If not, we would not be able to eat, my friend. We would not be able to drink a bottle of wine. I understand what Joe's saying, though. I understand what Joe's saying. It's not about spending. It's not the only thing, guys, that is causing this inflation. I understand. I have to push back on that. I understand what Joe's saying, and I and I get it. But here, here's my thing. We have to look at all aspects. Okay. Yes. All That's my aspects, aspect. okay? So I want to know why I'm paying more. If there's an extra transportation cost, let's figure it. If there's a different cost, I want to know why. Yes, things went up because of COVID. Yes, we're still recovering from COVID. But I want to see what the cost is. I want to see the graph. I want to see the chart. I want to see why you're charging us more. Because my friends deserve, Mr. Nice Guy deserves to know why he's paying more for his groceries, just like yeah. Ray does and Joe does. We all deserve that. And if we're going to pay more because we raise taxes, well, damn it, Joe, we're already paying out the ass. We might as well make corporations pay out the ass right along with us. Yeah, they got to pay What's something. What's the definition buddy? of inflation, guys? <clears throat> Two negative Anybody? quarters of GDP. Two negative quarters of GDP. It, it, it's literally the expansion of money supply that the government's printing out money and and okay. and just uh, loads of spending. That's the literal literal definition of inflation. I'm sorry. So I, I, I don't said, buy I that people <laughs> that corporations are price gouging. Corporations can price gouge at any given time, not just now. <laughs> There's no stopping in price gouging. That's why yeah. I wanted to say to Ray that but I don't believe that that's the only no. reason. We're fed this bullshit to believe that it's only corporations, although that does have a part of it. But I don't think that is necessarily all all of it, right? I really don't. Well, I, 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 I can agree with you in one aspect that, yeah, like I said, that was my perspective because that's what I what I what I saw. And there is a chart where it says the big there's like the three big you know, companies that do the outsourcing of those ketchup and these kind of all the commodities that we normally have. And they made billions and they did the, the same thing, the buyback. I say this again, like Rose said. And again, I say it like to you, because, again, this goes into your realm. Yeah. Every individual American, regardless of poor or, 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 or rich American, decides how they move forward in life in their aspects. Like she said, the landlords could say, and you have, Mr. Magic, in your own eye, in your eyes, in your own deal, you have taken care of the tenants. You have been, uh, if you are saying that you are, you're a good person, you do the best you can. She threw a suggestion, maybe food services again, but that's where we contact as a, as a homeowner, these people. But again, it goes back into the same thing. Dude, we get taxed daily on everything. You don't go and buy anything and you don't get taxed. Corporations, it's there. They don't pay a dime. All we're asking is for them to pay a fair share. Okay, right. Let me ask so you this. If tomorrow inflation, they paid their fair share, how would that affect your life? Inflation. How would it affect my life? Yeah. Guys. How would it affect your life if they paid their fair share today, right now? I'll make sure of it. I'll go there hold with my on, baseball guys. bat. It'd make you I'll harder make sure, to buy. I'll hold, make sure they hold pay on, their fair guys. share. Hold on, guys. Come on now. 
Hold on. How would it affect your life? Honestly speaking, would you get that money? Would she get that money? Would I get that money? That is why we're having no. that conversation. How do we ensure? Listen, listen, oh, guys. Right. Inflation no, is the increase in prices while you have a fall in the purchasing value of money. There you go. Okay. Increasing right. prices while you have a fall in the value of money. But, but that look is what he inflation. Said. And yeah. why is the money devaluing? Because of spending. Is it? I'm, I don't know. I'm asking you. Well, Who that's made it what we're talking about, hon. We can't just assume it's from spending. Okay? Okay, let me ask you this. Simple question. Can companies price gouge at any given time and not just now? Simple question. Yes or no? Yes or no? That's it. So yes. I know. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Do okay, you think that... Do we, can we regulate that? <laughs> Can we regulate that? No, no, yes. it's never been re regulated, has it? It has it ever been regulated? Yes. Until now, when do you think we after nine eleven they put out a regulation on price gouging because price gouging was astronomically high. People were taking advantage of Americans after 9-11. They were you charging astronomical way. prices for <laughs> things, and they absolutely did have to come out and actually make criminal regulations against price gouging. But, but Joe Biden came on television saying that the, the, the same thing you guys are saying, the companies are price gouging, if you remember that interview, and he pretty much said that there's nothing they could do about it. You know, they're just going to let it go. Okay, but I'm asking you a question. Okay, our this is a good question, and I'm going to say this for everybody here. Oil flows in different countries, like Trump said. Under our ground. Water. Under our ground. Nestle. Big yeah. oil. If right now, like you just said, they could keep gouging and big oil, like they try to do with OPEC, and they sent the message from the Saudi said, don't fuck with us. Because we're the ones that run the country. We're the ones that run the world with the oil. How would you feel if right now big oil said, you know what, bro? Fuck you. I'm going to go to ten dollars a gallon like they said because it's out there in their interviews when they said we're not gonna pop any more holes we lost money during pandemic we gotta give our investors a dividend is that not true i think they would love if ten, if guests went to ten dollars a gallon so, so, so you agree with the new green deal Pay for extra service. Joe, that's a that's the joke. Come on, bro. You're gonna pay for extra services because we already saw it right now during the pandemic. That the gap and all the whole you're gonna pay for extra services? Home Depot, Walmart, roofing. You remember, people still gotta come. Non-union union contractors, prices still gotta go. Remember, we couldn't get chips from across the sea because they were sitting in the bay, in the bay of the pigs. Okay, let's go. Come on, bro. So let's 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 go to the fact. We have to regulate big corporations to a certain extent where they give back their investment to government. Not that we say we give back like the fake 401k. No, they say we're giving a percentage. They haven't even offered. How many of those corporations during our pandemic? I want you guys to show me. Show me in a view. Any of the corporations that you guys are saying, the corporations, you that you, sir Joe, that you work for. How much did they give back to Americans during the flooding, during the pandemic? Let's go. Walmart. Every, I want to see how much they gave back to the dividends that they got. That's what we're talking about. This is an America for everybody. We do not leave anybody behind. Isn't that our motto? Let, let my man up here make money and not be obstructed correctly. Let you work and make your money. Let Rose live a life and be able to shop at Walmart. Because that's the cheapest place. Yeah, let's regulate. But the let food. me ask you this, Ray. If I price gouge in my in my own company, am I going to get capped at some point? If, if you can, if you start screwing around with your rent control apartments, what's going to happen to you, Joe? No, no, not rent control. But let's say I want to raise the rents to ten thousand a month. Yes. Am I gonna? Am I gonna be? Are you, am I? Are people gonna tell me? Oh no, that's wrong. I mean, you want to cap everything? You I'm not cap saying my, that. How I'm much I'm allowed that to make? That's the only that's issue it. I have with capping. No, no, no. I respect that. 
Either no, here's home. here's my thing about the capping, okay? Here's what the Democrats are talking about with the capping on on what you're making. What we're saying is if we have people making extreme wealth, <clears throat> now, of course, if it's your idea, you've created your wealth, you should get credit for what you make. Anybody, you know, whatever you make, if, if you've created something, if this is your ingenuity, if this is something that you've built, you get credit for what you make. That's an American dream. That's, it's the American way. We all should get credit for what we do, okay? Here's the thing, though. If your profit margins are high, so high that people, you're making like a 500% profit as the CEO of a company, and there are people down the street not even eating a decent meal, not even having a roof over their head. Do you think it's fair to just say, um, we'd like to take 2% off of that 500% profit and put that 2% to help those needy people? Do you think that's too much, Mr. Nice Guy, to ask? Yes, it's, it's infringing. It's, inf it's stealing. Basically, what you're trying as to do. As, you, you mean the e pluribus unum that says government. that we have no, on assuming, our dog? No, well, hold on. Okay, hold on, go ahead. Go this. ahead. Go assuming ahead. Assuming that something is yours when you did not work for it and you just want it handed to you, that is actually stealing. That is not a donation given. That is not worked for. That is just you want to do it just because you have an idea to do it. I don't agree with that. Okay. Okay. Then, here, then in that the realm of thinking, let Joe, let Joe, let Joe, okay, Joe go ahead, talking. go ahead, Joe. You want the government to take that two percent and dish it out? There is fraud written all over it. We got to get the government out of the landlord business. We got to get the government out of all these other businesses. Free market will work. It's supply and demand. We need some economic lessons for people to understand how the economy works. If you don't want to buy it, don't buy it. Availability of substitutes. You showed me a Heinz ketchup bottle. There's other brands. If Heinz is too expensive, ah, ah there is. There's other. I, and thanks but for Joe, buying Heinz. Rose brand. says she can't afford it, to go it, anywhere. It wasn't else. the Joe. Joe, you, uh, again, Rose says she can't finish. afford. She Let's can't afford finish. to not. She would love to go to the small place, but she can't afford to not go to Walmart. What do you think <laughs> of that? No, I shop at Walmart. Why do I go to the grocery store? We have Wegmans here, and go and pay fifty cents an item for a can of corn more. Why? It's stupid. I'm going to go where it's cheaper. And, and you're and buying the when, same when, corn? I'm buying the same thing. Okay, so that's a, that is an educated Thanks. consumer. Correct. I congratulate you. But you pay taxes, right? But what she's become, saying is she can't go it, down the street. Absolutely. She can't go down the street. But, uh, she has to go to the corporation to get that discount. That's what she's, I do I the same she's thing, getting. dude. I, I go to ShopRite because I like to get my groceries from an old school ShopRite, which was the AMP that had the coffee machine. Okay. I support yep. at least them because I know. And I and I double check prices. There are things that I would buy at Sam's, Sam's Club now. But again, it's in bulk. But it's not the point of me not wanting to buy it or the capital to come. Again, I say the same thing. He pays taxes. You pay taxes. Zero for the billionaires that use the loopholes to get around it. He will eventually get and to that. Close point. the loopholes. Close <laughs> the loopholes. Exactly. I agree with that's that. what I agree we agree. With that. He's going to get to a point, and I got blessed. And I'm going to say this because, again, I don't have anything against cap. I wish. I could be a capitalist and be able to be in a situation like you that you don't have to depend on anybody. No, so like I wish that I could say that, and I'm and I'm telling you, I'm the guy, I'm I'm the the D Jack Dempsey guy. I want to fucking hand them back my fucking social security check and tell them, fuck you. Here's everything. I don't want it. I was raised that way, but yeah. my disability is to a certain point. But this is the fact: we pay taxes. One, if they like they said, fifteen percent. They pay 15%. And again, like he said, we manage that money. We send it to the vets. We send it to the poor. We send it to North. And then we look at the other funding that's coming in, and we, again, appropriate it the right way. This is what it's – that's the problem that we have, that we have one side that wants one way, the other side wants the other, and not realizing that what do Americans actually need right now? We want good-paying jobs. Because essential workers are taking those jobs that nobody wants anymore. Texas, 
15% of the population is immigration. New York City, he can tell you, walk down by any construction site, and what do you see? Do you see union stickers? You see non-union stickers. Tax fraud. Tax fraud at the fullest, because they're not paying them by check, and they're paying them by the dollar. They're scabs. They're scabs. And, and, and my they- question, here's my question for Joe. So, if we actually closed all those loopholes, all those yes. tax loopholes, it yes. would be so much more than 2% to go towards the poor and the needy. You guys realize that, right? I mean, me well, asking that, for a, ta- a luxury punishment. 2% tax for those who are making uh, that big, that big uh, percentage uh, gain that I was saying to ask for those that are making so much, that 2%, that wasn't Jack considering if we closed all those loopholes, how much they would actually be paying. So I the mean, plane. so I mean, go yeah. I'll 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 throw away my two percent tax uh, idea for closing all the loopholes. No problem. Let check, me ask you something, check guys. Do you think up. it's fair that I that I purchase a distressed property, right? That's in horrible condition. That I'm taking the property value and raising it to really what it's supposed to be instead of being fucked up. No and the neighborhood. No there kitchen, and which is lowering the other land value in the neighborhood, right? Yes. So I come in, I lay the rent land, uh, land value, right? Should I be once I flip and I put all that hard work and I and I create jobs by putting people at work? I'm demonized. Here, here. Listen to this. Ready? I already know where he's going. Listen, uh, someone, a couple of people got on the block and came to my house, rang my doorbell, and said, "How dare you make your house good?" I said, what? I thought that's what everybody wanted. They go, you're raising my property ta- my property taxes. You know what I responded? What do you think I said to them? What do you get think out. I said? <laughs> get out. Get no, out no. of the neighborhood. No, no. no I'm no, old I school. Say that. I said, you know what I'm also doing besides raising your taxes? I'm raising your property value, stupid though. But that's the way we were growing up. Question. Listen. Rose, go, go, Joe. Yeah, I can I can sell Social Security, the prop short fund. Let's eliminate the cap on people who you, you stop paying Social Security. What two hundred thousand or three hundred thousand dollars, whatever it is, raise that up to a million. Only the employee, oh, pays, I didn't know not that. the employer. Don't don't make that employer match. I can pick you up millions and put Social Security in the black in a two years. Wow, that's a trip. I, 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 Never I thought of that. You. you see that that what do you that think? that you said right there, that should be something that America. Well, yeah, I mean, it sounds good. Oh, I, no. I, yeah, uh, I mean, it sounds good off the top of my head. I'd, I'd have to check it. I mean, I'd, we'd have to sit down and chat about it. But yeah, Please. I mean, sounds good. Well, you gotta right. stop them. You gotta stop them from fucking taking all the money out of Social Security for their pork belly. Oh, amen to that. Definitely, yeah, you gotta stop amen. that. And you see, Joe, you left what you said makes security. sense. That makes yeah. sense, Joe. If we had if we had a, a table where people could say, okay, look, I'm willing to do that. But again, we have real economists, people that we could follow that on both sides generate money to do that for us. Then Americans have an opportunity because I would say, Sid, if I can double my money and have you know, you uh, baby, twenty twenty two. Can you mute yourself when you're not talking? Shit, I'm getting sick. a lot of feedback here. I'm sorry, man. Thank you. Go ahead, man. Yeah, so you understand. I agree. See, those are the kind of things that, oh, give it. You know, you have to have the choice. So if an American can say, you know what, I'm a, I'm 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 tw- a young person at the at the age of working paper, 17, 16, say, you know what, I'd rather put it in the stock market because they and I can see. Again, like they say, if you do certain things and you you can see, I would agree with that. But again, under their own risk, they know that. That's see that I don't disagree, but not the entire system. And like and like uh, the, right. the, the the gentleman that just got on, Giffy Black, Giffy Baby, that they wipe us out with fucking endless wars or bullshit. That money should never be touched. What, it when, never be touched. I'm, I'm just when concerned about individuals that using that there? money because That's I'm, you I'm and concerned you. about them being left with nothing when they get older. I don't want them to it's, be destitute. You keep Social Security. Well, that's no, what I said. Right. It can't be what happens. I mean, look at this last two years. I've lost thirty percent of 
in, in my investments. So you can't let them do it as a total or only investment. But I think if you did that and let the people pay more who are working, they're entitled to Social Security, the millionaires and billionaires. They have every right to go cash that check when it comes. When, but if they've paid into it, then that way there it's fair that way. They pay on their income. And I would say anybody making 25000 and under pays nothing. Nothing in tax. Well, do you think it's fair that so I, that's what I was getting to? When I flip a house that I have to pay the government almost 40% of my hard earned flip? You think that's fair to a guy like me? 40%? That's not almost at all. Half. No, yeah, that's not that's not at all. You mean you buy a house for less because you have to fix it up and then you fix it up and you got to pay 40%? So, so I was saying Capital before, gains. until until the goalpost. Oh. Capital gains. Bit, I was saying if That's I buy a distressed property, right, and I fix it, and I bring it up to a livable condition, and I increase the property value to what it really should be. That once I go resell it and flip the house for what it actually costs, and I put again, I put my hard earned money into it, I funded it, I created jobs. That after I'm done with the sale, I got to give Joe Biden 40% of my money. Do you agree with that? Hey, can I make a point quick there, boss man? No. Well, I'm just saying, fuck all that. Let's, let's abolish the IRS and go to a 10% flat tax. Just 10% Amen. across the board. Amen, for everybody. Like, Why board, should I have matter. to give 40% of my hard-earned money and my smarts and my expertise and all the... All the years that yeah. I invested yeah. into no. crafting, into into investing into my trade and my craft, why should I have to give anybody? That's w way worse than the mafia. The mafia only takes like fucking that's what we percent, ten percent. I'd rather deal with the mafia on the street than deal with this fucking corrupt government of forty percent. That's a Baby, shakedown. You're a good, that's you're a shakedown. He, he, you don't think the Baby. mafia shakes you down Baby for more boy. when they want to? I'd rather deal with them. It's much less than forty percent. <laughs> No, 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 Baby, no, 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 no. Made a great point. I tell Do you, you the remember difference. Herman I tell you the difference. He's right. I'm a New Yorker, and I've been around. And I've been around. What? Can we get a one at a time between people so we don't Hello? have all this talk over? Because I can't hear a fucking what anybody saying. Hey, baby, you made a great point. But you remember Herman Cain? He was running for president. He's deceased now. Nine, 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 yes. nine percent. Uh, income tax, yes, I remember. nine percent corporate tax. Remember. That's what we need. That's what we need. I'd say I say ten percent across the board need. for all taxes: income, corporate, property tax, everything. Ten percent. Because now they're trying. Like, tax so they're... <laughs> yeah, but that's not gonna happen. No, I'm saying that's like, why there's in always total, gotta like, be a sliding like, scale for it, like you said. Well, hold on, hold on. Hear me out here, because I'm not talking ten percent for each item. I'm saying in total, they take up, like, you say, go. what your property is worth, your income, and all that. And then at, out of the total value, at the end of the year, you pay 10% of that in tax. They don't touch your money at all throughout the year. But at the end of the year, they look at every, all you've earned. They look at your property and say, okay, well, based off, what we, based off your property and all this and what you earn this year, here's your 10%. Pay this by February 21st type shit. And then you just keep on going with your fucking life. We'd have to have debtors prison because nobody would save the ten percent. They already have debtors <laughs> prison, dude. The fucking IRS yeah, will that's lock why their it's ass up. Different. For like bucks. Got a I'm a ten, as a corporation. I'm a ten ninety nine worker. I'm a gig worker. Okay, I paid no taxes on my money. So when my taxes come due this year, I will probably have to pay. I saved some of that money. Tons yes. of people I work with. I'm a I work Amazon flex drive. They didn't save their money. I know they did. I'm trying to tell these young kids, put some aside. You're going to have to pay taxes. Oh, no. Yeah, you are. The IRS will 20%. lock you the fuck up for 100 bucks. Oh, I know. I got a, I got a buddy of mine that that uh, didn't fucking pay $100. Or it was like $120 in capital gains tax a couple of years back. They just arrested him fucking last week for tax evasion. He's doing three to five. Over 110 fucking dollars. No, they don't care, man. They don't care. That's what I'm saying. They don't go after. The, they don't go after the rich people ever. That's why you don't understand. Like it, 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 you're in a position. You're, you're in a position as an American citizen that once you are born, you have a social security card. Once you have your working papers, you start paying taxes. We never get interest on that money, which I agree. 
there should be a different system where those that want to invest it because we're in a different time zone now. Now we're not back in the, you know, back to the future. <laughs> so we have investment. We have Bitcoin millionaires, young kids. Like, you know, I'm assuming this guy's like maybe 30, 25, whatever. You know, you guys are the future. You guys are making money hand over fist. I mean, obviously with the Bitcoin and the old stuff, but yeah, drop shipping and all that. So there's a different world. But again, it goes back into the same thing. They don't care. They're going to tax the shit out. Every time you purchase something, you get taxed. And the corporations get nothing. And we give them money. That's the part, the harmful part of it. We subsidize big corporations. We, we as Americans, we right. Walmart comes to your town. What's the first thing they say? We want tax abatements. We're going to right. create jobs. Ray, you don't think some of that Ukraine, those, uh, uh, all that money to Ukraine, some of that could have helped us American people uh, here in America? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Not a yep. single penny should have gone I, to that fucking I, corrupt Hey, guys, we're going to hit the debt limit on Thursday. Care more than two percent? Yeah, Rose, we are. What's going to happen? Let me, well, let me that put doesn't fucking way. matter. What? That doesn't matter with we, fractional, we have what's from more than fractional enough money. banking. The money's not real. Right, but they're gonna they're gonna vote they're gonna not raise the debt limit. That's gonna hurt Americans. So no one here is America first because I mean everybody's silent now that I brought this up. I mean hundred million right. dollars, man. Well what I'm what I would say Oh is, no, I'm America Mr. first Mr. all day. You know that. Yeah, yeah. No, because, no, no. I'm because, I'm listening. Because I just we're talking about taxing this one, taxing that one, but meanwhile we're sending money I, I, like I, I, I would say America style. first on us. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead. Go ahead, man. Yeah, but guy, again, let, let's just be real on this. We we are the we are the power of democracy. If we do not, again, we, you, us, our servicemen, the people that die for our country, do not go to these ever endless wars, you're going to have Russia, like they did, come over, build a bridge, and build bears. That's what they're doing. So we have to, again, as, again, it's this is not about money. This is an unnecessary money that should be coming from the budget right, of right. Real quick, war, real quick. where we're sending a trillion dollars. And again, I understand room. that. But we have enough money here. It's like New York City. I agree with certain things. Ray. Real quickly, did you ever God serve in the military? I did did you ever serve? That's my question. Okay, well, unless you have served, never again in your life advocate for sending Americans never. to die on foreign never. soil to protect the feigned fucking phantom of democracy. We are not spreading democracy around the world. Are you fucking kidding me? We put Zelensky in power. We overthrew their democratically elected government back in 2012. And I said that. And I... With help from the Biden crime We family. should never... We should, All right, we should so, never so, so, send so Americans you, overseas. You, you... Uh, right, so so now we're going to attack our fellow our Americans? Back. That's the no, whole thing? No, I'm just saying that it's not... It's not no, no, right no, no, no. to I say we need Rose. to go defend I, these no countries. Attacking. He's, he's speaking his mind. Are you a serviceman? Yeah, I just... Are you a serviceman? Yes, I, said, I did seven years in the Marine Corps. Yes, I did seven years in the Marine Corps. Hoorah. Hoorah. I respect you, and I'll let you know right now. One of your servicemen, one of your hoorah brothers, died. This last week, I went to his <clears throat> unplugging... And I went to his funeral, and he lives right up the block from me. He is buried right under a flag, which I will be celebrating. I have two cousins in the Marines. I never wanted, never wanted anybody to die, and I don't. I understand that we have endless wars. I respect what you're saying. Again, I respect what you're saying. We should be like, I am Costa Rican by blood. We don't have an army, but we have a military force of police. Okay, we're almost there. And I understand that. Well, I have two cousins I'm in the service, to... Marine, a judge, uh, 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 army vet that came fucked up. No, 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 I wasn't no. no. I, I, I understand that. I don't want you to feel like I'm against them, and you're not against them. We're on the same page. We don't want. No, no, no. That's all we try. You know, we're not trying to do that, but we're trying to at least clarify where we believe in, and that's good. But the reality is, let's just be real. If we don't fight 
in other countries, this will happen. Go back to, forget about Vietnam, World War II. Why did we go? And that's why we're there. We're not fighting, again, if, if, if it's Ukraine well, is the problem, blah, 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 blah. Uh... Yes, I may disagree or agree, and I have no, and wait, and I have my, and I have my beliefs about that money too. I'm a Democrat. I strongly believe that there is, there might be something when the, you know, when they, like Spanish people say, you push the shit, you smell it. You didn't know the shit was there until you pushed it. Something smells. Again, let it go through the process. But we cannot not, we just cannot fight. You know the situation with Russia. We are an anti-communist country, period. As an American Democrat well, can progressive, I, can I we speak will fight on, the Russian on our land or across the seas. Hold right, real there quick, you know? on the Russia thing. Well, on the Russia thing, let's let's put it bluntly. Um, Russia has the GDP of like California. They don't have the military capability to really fuck with Europe. Like, if say, let's say if they blew through Ukraine, and the next country they went into was Poland, the Polish military is fucking tier one. They are on par with with like the UK and Germany. They would never make it past the fucking Polish border. It would be a goddamn slaughter. Yeah, and, and you would you'd have to deal with NATO until it touches a NATO ally. Let them handle it themselves. I'm sick of American treasure going overseas to support countries that wouldn't lift a fucking finger to help us if the if the roles were reversed. Right now, if China landed on the West Coast, not a single one of our allies would stand up and send troops over here to defend Americans. That is a fucking fact. But, <clears throat> sir, as a Marine, though, I, I, I know that you, you defend remember, all innocent. The biggest stick, Do you not, sir? The biggest stick rules. I took an oath to the United States Constitution of the that. American people. I could give a fuck less about anybody else in yes. any other country. I will die to defend Americans and Americans alone. I will not go and fight again on a foreign soil. I learned in Iraq and Afghanistan, Rosebud, my greatest enemies are not overseas. They're right here at home. I will never again be okay with going to a foreign conflict because I'm still at enlistment age. I'm only 30. If we go to war and they enlist a draft yes. and that I'm a former service member, my name's on that list first. I'm going. I don't have a fucking choice. You're gone. Because I'll be drafted first. But your Former views are different is always now. first in the draft. Wait, 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 wait. But but let's let's go back a little bit. When you went there, you went like my friend's this Mike's Mike's son. He just came back to bury his father. With the hoorah and the energy, it took you time to understand that things weren't what you thought that they were when you decided to join or to do. And I agree with you because we are actively supporting various countries around the world and sending money. What happened with the Saudis? We sent the whole bumper force to make sure that nobody would mess with them. Our interests are there when we have our own interests here. That's America first. I agree with you. See, I I'm not saying mega, but America first, I agree with. Make our own shit. Build our own shit. Stop being in, in areas that we... That's why we need to build when, when we send NATO, NATO goes. Like right now, everybody's watching it because, of, like you said, he's, they're not a NATO country. And Putin jumped, jumped in. But if he touches Poland, it's a wreck. Again, whose side are you on? If he go, if he touches, let's just be real. If he goes in, would you say, hey, now we got a World War Three, are we going to support NATO? That's the question to ask. Well, and I believe well, you say, okay. and you said So if, 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 Poland, if, if Putin attacked if Putin attacked a NATO ally, the only way I would be okay with America stepping in is in the use of unconventional weapons. For example, nuclear, biological. Mm -hmm. Outside of that, I do not believe America should get involved in a war with Russia. You, you are talking about two nuclear and what are we doing with Ukraine? We're, yes. We're getting involved, and we shouldn't be. Yes, it's just a proxy war. It, what, what's happening in Ukraine right now you need to look back at history because we're repeating ourselves again in history. This is the exact same thing we did in Vietnam. But prior to American involvement, we armed, fund, and trained the South Vietnamese to stand up against the communists. And when the communists burned through the country, that's when we got involved. Yeah, Af 
Afghanistan, Iraq, the list goes on. We do this all the time. Americans are going to wind up in Ukraine. It's going to happen because Russia is not going to surrender. This is Russian military doctrine. Oh, it's going to happen. Russia has never been in a war where they have not lost at least a half a million men. Russia's not going to give up. They will throw bodies at this problem until Ukraine no longer has the resources to fight them. And no matter how much money the West puts in, eventually Ukraine's going to run out of men. It's and inevitable. Russia won't. It's inevitable. And what I'm wondering is it's would you send your sons and daughters to, to Ukraine to fight? Ukraine. Yeah. No, it's inevitable that Russia is going to take I, over I, I, Ukraine. You know what it is? It's, it's, it's actually true. I would not. Let me tell you something. I'm going to tell you something that's going to blow you guys. Again, I, I just I say it in the best way possible. When my cousin joined the service, his dad had joined the service because of family issues, and they saw it a way to get out. In New York City, it's either a gang. At my time, it was breakdancing and, uh, you know, skateboarding and, you know, the arts or you ended up in the service. My uncle decided to bounce from the service. A newly minted American from Costa Rica, and he went, served in Japan, did the embassy duty. His son did the same thing. I had to convince him because now I realized, hey, bro, you want to follow your father's footsteps, but you don't want to go full time. No, I want to go. He did the reserves. He still wanted to serve for his country. He did the reserves. He did all the training. He did the whole thing. Now he serves in the Air Force out in Long Island, and he does the, the McCarthy. He jumped from one to the other because they wouldn't bump him as a sergeant. So he decided to take the text from the Air Force and he's doing his thing. He even said it. I'm happy I'm here because well, I'm Well, we got to look at the bigger picture, too. Dead, Des 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 despite country. how you feel about Russia, despite how you feel about Russia, because Putin is an evil dictator. He's brutal to his own people. But let, we have yeah. to admit the bigger picture here. Him. Russia is one of the few countries that is standing up against the globalist agenda. And as long as that is occurring, I see no need for intervention. Because America is the forefront of the globalist and agenda. And what's the globalist agenda according to you? What is the globalist uh, agenda? Okay, so okay, look at the World Economic really Forum. Forum. Look, at, yeah, look at the World Economic Forum. Klaus Schwab said just last year, by the year 2030, you will own nothing and be happy. You can look at UN Agenda Plan 2030. It's been on the books for 50 years. Uh, the United States is the main author of that bill. They're, they're trying to implement a one world government or a great reset. It's openly being discussed. Our world leaders literally say it in public and nobody bats a fucking eye. Like the European Union was the first step. Now you have the, now you have the Pan-African Union forming through BRICS. What China's doing with their Belt and Road Initiative is putting in all the necessary infrastructure in Africa to unionize that country into a solid nation. And they'll owe their allegiance to China for doing so. And nobody likes to talk about the BRICS movement. Oh, the BRICS that's going in effect by the end of this month, where Russia, China, almost all of Africa, Venezuela, Brazil, Turkey, and now they got the Saudis that are going to sign the 28th of January, are going to sign into it as well. That cuts the U.S. out of the global oil market overnight. Our country will be bankrupt the minute that deal is finalized and it's filed through the World Economic Forum. That means the petrodollar is no longer the world reserve currency for trading oil. It's going to be the Chinese yuan which will bring the Chinese economy back up from its slump it is currently having. That's their main reason for getting behind this. And Russia has become exorbitantly richer since this war started because of our sanctions on their oil. Now Europe and Asia has to buy their oil at a higher market value. This is all one big great game. That's all war is ever used for. It's one big great game to reset the levers of power. You, you asked earlier why we got involved in World War II. Oh, well, let's see, because it's now public knowledge and declassified that the U.S. government knew the Japanese were going to attack Pearl Harbor. They had intercepted the communications. They fucking knew, and they let it happen because America was so anti-war at that point that the president needed an excuse to get Americans involved. So America lets this shit happen on a regular basis. They will let Americans die. Well said, Devil Dog. Opinion on their side to get us into conflict. That's sad, but and he's that's, right. It's, it's and this I, big game that I, they've been playing see, for the years and years. We as Americans are seen. Yeah, but you know what? Let's just let's go back to one thing. 
And this is where, again, America first. If we were cut off on the other side, let's say whatever, are we ready to take on America and continue moving forward? Do we have enough manufacturing? Do we have enough food services? Are we in agreement with our local countries down the line? to say, hey, food services, we need this, or we're going to continue being dependent across the sea. Like you just said, oil dependence. Could. That's why I'm happy that we can move towards, well, yes. We could. No, we, and we're not oil dependent. Texas alone could supply America with oil for the next 500 years. That's just the state of Texas. It has and, enough and oil we, and natural gas and underneath it to supply it. this whole country. But listen to what he's saying. Listen to what you just said. And who owns the biggest oil refinery in Texas? BP. The biggest percentage? The Saudis. They own BP, Lionel Basel, because we allowed it. Because Why? we allowed Saudi Arabia to yes. share OPEC. Because that, it's, a, it's a means see? for global control. <sighs> I'm a lot smarter than you people saw give me credit for it. <laughs> but, but but no, it's not about that. It's that's why we're here talking so people can say, wait a minute. Oh shit. I didn't know that because I knew that. And I said, how could you continue going down that line? Listen, I understand that we are oil dependent. I love my hot rod. I love my gas guzzling fucking Mustang. I just mm, I grew up in that era. But we have to be realistic that there are alternatives. It's not gonna happen overnight. But we did start with Jimmy Carter with the solar. Now we have more technology. Homes are popping up. People are getting solar. The car situation is getting better because now it's not only Tesla. It's an option. You know, at the end of the day, if you want a home, like my friend, there's an organizer that I know that that that, that works and lives in Middlesex County. And, and he bought a home. He turned it into solar. Now he removed again because I saw the whole floor. And I, we want our gas. Well, so hey, so I, Ray, I have to buck up against you on everything. solar real quick. Everything's running on electric. So everything's running on electric. Ray, I have to buck up against you on solar real quick. Okay, so Whoa. Rogan had a Rogan. No, Rogan had a guy named Sitrath Kara on his podcast Why? last week, and he exposed the because the horrors of cobalt and lithium mining. The single right. biggest factor for slavery in the world today is the people of the Congo. Okay, Tens, okay. okay millions of them are digging cobalt out of the ground with go. their fucking hands for all of your lithium batteries, for all of yes. your green products. For this green push That's for environmentalism problem. in the West, we are allowing slavery in the third world, and we act like we're doing the noble, righteous thing because, oh, I'm, I'm saving the planet with solar. Bullshit. You're condemning millions of people to slavery who work for less than 25 cents a day in the Congo. Women and children digging cobalt out of the ground with their fucking hands. While people sit up here and virtue signal about the green thing will save the planet, the most efficient means of energy possible is oil and natural gas. Natural gas puts out less than 0.3 pounds of carbon per 100 pounds of natural gas burned. It is the cleanest energy source on the planet outside of nuclear. And natural gas is the mining procedures are, aren't exactly the greatest, but it's a okay. lot better so than a lithium so pond or a cobalt mine. And uh, oh. what happens when there's clouds? And how do you have the battery banks to store your solar power? You need more lithium and cobalt, which just means more mines and more slavery in the third world. I cannot stand the green movement because the argument sounds great. But okay. the reality, like the base of the supply chain you. is horrible. But Ray, I the question you. is, you're in New York, so are you ready to get rid of your stove? I agree and with you. are you ready to upgrade your furnace to electric? Are you ready for all these expenses and, 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 and stuff? You know about this, right? Right, exactly. And I'm not ready for it because that's what you're would, governor wants. I would, I'm going to say this to you right now. We... Wait, 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 wait. I'm going to, I'm good. First, I'm going to answer him because I have yeah, yeah, again, you're right, agree. Yeah. We are in a forum where we all have yeah. facts brought to us. That yeah. blew, that, that, that didn't blow my mind. I had it somewhere, but you're refreshing me. So now I'm going to answer this question. This is where we as, as, as smart consumers, contractors, because there are contractors like Halliburton doing whatever they do here. So let's just say that our, let's just say, Bloods for diamonds. Okay? We enforce that in those countries, 
Lower Those right. jobs are done safe like we do in New York City with unionized workers. Mass chemicals and whatnot. What is happening to the coal miners in Kentucky? What has happened to those coal miners in Kentucky? What has happened to people that work in these type of industries if they're not protected? So we're going to have to do something. So if it's either oil, gas, coal, we still have to protect the worker. And again, as Americans, as a the consumer, we are the Amazon of that product because we need to bring it back here. We can't find it here on our land. There's nowhere that we have it. It's got to come from Africa. Then we need to do the right thing and say, hey, we're not going for war. We're going to help your government because you're right. China has invaded, and people don't realize this, Costa Rica's first national stadium was built by the Chinese. 30,000 workers. You know what the concession for Costa Rica, the Switzerland of America? They all stay.